Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday evening. And here we go with another one of these. So tonight, uh, we are painting Batman Inc., uh, which is really fun. A collection of international Batmen, I guess. Uh, so right now you're looking at the uh, the start here of uh, Batman of Japan, which rhymes. Uh, you can see there's a big old spot there. Um, sometimes it's nice to have the camera here because I can actually see uh, these spots that sometimes I don't catch when I'm just sitting here looking at the model with my naked eye. I can't see that there's a big old glaring spot missing right there. And that there is some space here around this eye that needs to be filled in. All right. So I'm going to try to try to get all that filled in. Cool. But yeah, eight members in Batman Inc. that I have to paint. Uh, and I've been doing a lot of the major color blocking already on a lot of these. Uh, there's two specifically that I'm not, uh, that I haven't really done much on. But as you can see, Batman of Japan has a lot done actually. He's just gonna really just need some highlighting uh, and you know finish out his spacing and whatnot. Um, same goes for sort of Batman of Moscow. He's looking pretty good. Um, he's gonna need some some just detail work really. But as far as the colors, they're all blocked out and they're looking pretty good. Uh, then you have uh, I think this guy's called Knight. Who needs he needs some work, but you can kind of see the basic color scheme there of night. And then we also have uh, uh, Raven Red, also mostly blocked out. Just need to do some more minor work on him. So so far zero done, but lots of this is Night Runner. So Night Runner needs a lot of highlight on the blue, actually. Uh, so I may actually start on Night Runner, um, but I still have a number of other guys that I want to finish here. I'm going to move this chair closer to me so I can look at the character cards. I got uh, El Gacho. Uh, you can see he's he's pretty well underway right now. So we'll keep working on El Gaucho. And then uh, I want to say this guy's name right. Uh, Chief, Chief Man of Bats really only has the yellow on him right now, but he's got a few different colors and things that uh, I need to add. And then finally, last but not least, is this guy here. This guy here, Dark Ranger. So Dark Ranger has a lot. He's, he has no colors on him. So let's, let's block things out. Again, I like to block out using uh, contrast paints because it gives me the base color and the shade. So... Hey, what's up, Nelson? So we're going to start working on these. Let me know if you want a Zoom link. I, I can shoot you a Zoom link, and we'll get to the chatty chats. Yeah, these Batman Ink minis are very cool. I'm going to try to get this set done before we jump back into some of your commission stuff, sir. So, so it should go by pretty quick. That's the good news with these. It's not really much. Um, they paint, they're pretty simple in terms of their paint schemes. So as long as I am diligent about getting the, the colors blocked in and I do a decent enough job on highlighting, these tend to paint pretty quick. 
um, it's mainly the 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 goofiest uh, outfits are usually the hardest ones to paint. But this one here shouldn't be too bad to paint. Mr. Night Ranger. Is it, does his name Night Ranger? Dark Ranger. It's pretty funny. Night Ranger, I think of uh, uh, that 1980s song, Motoring. Motoring. They showing my age again by referencing that song. Great song, though. You should actually listen to that. You didn't expect your online order? What did you order again? Curious to know what the next painting job is going to be. Appreciate the business as always. It's helping keep me and my son uh, entertained while we play games and he does his schooling and I go to work during this uh, shutdown time. <clears throat> and there we go. Oh, a little flame of fire there. Oh, a new Walking Dead. Okay, so we're gonna be painting some more Walking Dead. Okay, all right. Um, there is a major thing I need to do with Dark Ranger here, and it has to do with his uh, the white color that's gonna be his his outfit. It looks kind of terrible for this actually, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. Um, he does have a white, he's supposed to have a white outfit. And uh, I have the choice of either making it like the, the outlines of the outfit to be a dark color, or I can go with like a, a Griffin, a Griff, Griff Charger gray, which is really where I'm leaning. I just need to find a, a more full bottle of Griff Charger Gray. Here we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cover the entire body uh, minus Sans belts. I'm gonna forget the belts for now. We're gonna do Griff Charger Gray over uh, most of the body here. All right. Yes, this is this is Dark Ranger, and in fact, I'm going to do the visor as well because the visor actually is kind of this color. Um, and so we're going to get the visor and get the helmet. He looks more like a paratrooper type character than anything else. Get all this done. I'm not sure how I feel about his uh, character design. I mean, it's it's fairly cool, I guess. Pretty cool character design. I just I don't know that I like the predominant color of him being white. It just reminds me of like a. It's just a very I'm sure this is an older costume design, like from the 70s or whatever. Um, hopefully uh, we get Mark to jump on or somebody that wants to uh, talk me up while I'm painting. It's always interesting. I'm gonna, you know what, Nelson? I am gonna shoot you a, I'm gonna shoot you a Zoom link. So if you want to jump on, you can jump on, get me, uh, help get me demonetized. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. Let me shoot you a link right now. All right. Dude, dude. Uh, all right. There we go, sir. Okay, so you now have a Zoom link, and uh, yeah, we'll get you, 
we'll get you on board here. <laughs> help, help get me demonetized. <laughs> well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna block out the major colors for these guys, and then uh, and then I'll go through and start doing the detail work. All right, so this guy here, he's got gray pants, and he has. Uh, he has gray pants. Actually, they're kind of a bone color, kind of a bone brown color. So I might do I might do them a little bit darker. So let's try let's try the um, snake bite leather. But first, I want to do green on his uh, the center of his chest here, just a very cool. I like this, his design. Chief Man of Bats. Oh, that, that's actually, okay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Before I get too deep into this. Chief Man of Bats. Actually, this area here is yellow, so let's get that yellow, and this part right here also yellow. Okay, that looks about right. Still a little yellow right there too. There we go. All right, Nelson is in the waiting room. Let's go ahead and let him in. There you go. All right. Hello there. Hey, what's up, Nelson? What's happening? Not much, man. Just painting my Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I actually man. feel bad. I'm, I'm pretty positive it's because of me. Half of your fucking channels are demonetized. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I don't. I really don't. It's the. Uh, I I was making money off of one, really one video, and that was the video my wife was in, and it was for not the best reason. So, uh, so <laughs> mon monetization doesn't really, it don't really do anything for me. At least now I can talk. I can speak my mind before I get banned. You know, we can yeah. badmouth China. And then, uh, you know, then then offend all the white people. <laughs> they just can't. They just can't wait to defend China. I don't understand. They do not understand that at all. Uh, yeah, I was watching a, a quick Stephen Crowder segment. It was so good because he did a coverage about Trump's uh, recent press briefing. He had a yeah. timeline. Yeah, they had a timeline for all the news. I was like cutting, editing, and all that stuff that uh, trying to put put the message out of context. Yeah, and today he did the same thing back to them. He did a, almost like a PowerPoint presentation, and except the editing part was the actual whole speech. So they were calling. He was calling out CNN, and CNBC, and all this like mm -hmm. fake news stuff. And then he was like pretty much looking at a crowd, saying like, "Hey, remember we." This to me, this is what I actually said, and of course, I just figure like this is all good, but it's kind of pity in a way, yeah. But, you know, but the thing is that most people probably didn't even watch this or care about it, so like in the end, what is the point? <laughs> well, whatever. I mean, I, I what I don't understand, what I don't get is what why people would defend. China over, you know, over the Chinese government, knowing what we already know about the Chinese government. How is that <laughs> defensible? Right? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why, why, you know, people who like would because defend them. But there, there are people that I mean, there are people that were that are willing to take the word of the Chinese government over like their own family members. I don't get that. 
Yeah, I, that's that, how like, brainwashed they are. What the hell? And it's like, well, here, no, here's here's an action. And when you start explaining it to them, then they cover their ears and they're angry. And I'm like, what? What the hell happened? Can you not? We 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 can't criticize a known like dictatorship slash communist regime. We can't do that. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> people that are defending the there are people that are defending the world health organization why because bill gates thinks they're cool um yeah. really i don't understand that i don't understand like i i don't care what your feelings are about trump or whatever i don't care what your feelings are about trump or democrats or republicans or anything like that i just i just need to stop you at the line <laughs> that you are defending the Chinese government. You, you know, yeah. when you, and when you call it out, you're like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, especially when you call out WHO, you're like, wait a minute. Did you not? And, and I, I've offered to show this to people, like people that I once thought were smart. I'm like, okay, what if I showed you footage of the World Health Organization basically towing the line for China? What if I showed you direct evidence of, of their leadership making statements of, of backing the lie that China put out about you know non -hum, no human to human transmission? And if, if I even offer to put up evidence, like if, if I even offer to just say like, hey, you know, we don't agree here, can I at least show you, you know, some evidence to support what I'm saying, then it's a complete shutdown. I, I just don't understand that attitude at all. That yeah. it, not only do you not, you know, it's, it's, I think it's fine to disagree with people. I think it's a hundred percent fine and normal to disagree with people. Why can't you, but, but why can't people, and again, I'm talking about people I'm related to. I'm talking about people that, you know, that I consider to be normally intelligent people. Why can't we just, why can't you just calm, we calmly discuss this? But to them, there are people that hold media so sacrosanct. Like they believe without question it's like, and, and the funny thing is that they're all like, oh, but that person's Christian. They believe in God. They're stupid. Okay. They believe, they, they might believe in something with no evidence. But right now, you're proving to me that you believe in things without evidence. Like you're not even <laughs> willing to listen to somebody the that, that I don't even want to present an opinion. I'm just going to present observable fact. Here is what was said by the World Health Organization. Here is the timeline of events. There, there doesn't need to be any opinion injected to it at all. You could just yeah. post the, you could just post it live. And there are people that are so religious. They're so religious to basically, oh, I worship whatever it says on the TV that they don't even want to hear a counter argument. That's crazy to me. Like that's, that's not just crazy. That's like dangerously, that's profoundly dangerously stupid that you, you cannot like, oh, well, you know, CNN said this and Trump is a mean guy. Therefore, I'm just going to believe whatever the hell they say. And if that means that the Chinese government is right, then that means I'm defending the Chinese fucking government. <laughs> I don't get that. And it's even like, even to the point where it's like, okay, okay, fine. You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to listen to, uh, you don't want to listen to, um, you know, the US representatives who represent this. Well, fine. Guess what? Listen to Japan. Listen to India. Listen to listen to Taiwan, listen to Singapore, listen to the countries that are all calling out China and the World Health Organization. Don't listen to us then. You don't want to listen to us, don't listen to us. Listen to other countries at least 
that are all saying the same things that don't have, you know, the orange man agenda in this country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who care who gives a shit about the orange man at this point? Like just listen if you if you're not gonna take our word for it, do you trust China? Do you trust do you trust Japan's government more than you trust China's government? And the answer better fucking be yes. <laughs> because otherwise you have real like do you trust your other Asian allies that live in the same region? that fought off the disease faster and better because they didn't fucking trust China. Do you yeah. trust them? You better trust them. I don't care if you listen to me, listen to them. The fucking Japan came out immediately and they were like, don't trust the WHO. They're the Chinese health organ, Japan. Japan, yeah. the country that doesn't want to start shit with anybody came out and just straight out like fucking ballers just said they're the Chinese health organization. They, they listen to China hook, line and sinker. They're towing the line for them. Do not trust these people. Yeah. Do they have an and agenda? Dr. Fauci is with them now too. I, I, I starting like, to see like surfing evidence about him, like with Bill Gates and some of the measures that he said, and it got me super worried. It's just like, I think the real shock is going to be to to those of us who actually give a shit and are paying attention and aren't religious. Um, the real shock is really is realizing how many of the media companies and how many of the celebrities and everything else in this country, how much of it is just basically in China's pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the it's real shock. Politics professors from harvard what was mm-hmm. Stanford, whatever else right and then no, not even um, that like it, even beyond that like th- consider lebron james had a oh, problem yeah, he had a problem with head. with shut up and dribble people are yeah you know you know what shut up and dribble oh i'm gonna stand for my race politically i'm gonna say china tells him to shut up okay yeah right <laughs> <laughs> china says shut up and dribble that fool shut up and dribbled. Yeah. Just, At the end of the day, I, he just cares about money. I don't Cares understand how – my shock is just the, the number, the sheer number of, let's call themselves, self-identified intellectual people who cannot keep simple score. I don't understand that. I don't understand – and I'm. It, it's, this is my frustration, like – Man, You're, the people are going to they're going to come out and say, oh, well, yeah, you know, this is just a this is, you know, I, li- I trust the mainstream media because this is just a hoax. Boy, tr- oh, you mean like you did for three years when they were talking about Russia? You mean like how <laughs> right they were about Covington? You mean like how many other two dozen stories I could bring up that were sensationalized news that you trusted the main? When are you going to fucking see a pattern? That they're yeah. consistently lying. I don't. I just don't understand. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the people that, uh, you know, I'm smart. I watch the news. No shit. Watching the news is step one. You have to watch the news, then go. Okay, where's the lie? Who profits off of this lie? And then yeah. go find an uh, find another couple of sources. It's the only way. That's the only way you can actually be following. Uh, current events but I was watching um, I was watching a, a, I think it was a Taiwanese broadcast that would that was chronic you know that they laid out the timeline you know with China and I'm, and and I'm thinking okay like they had like Taiwan had warned everybody back in December uh, no this can be transmitted human to human <laughs> yeah. And we're going to we're going to lock down immediately. <laughs> like they had warned people. And you have, you know, you have these statements from World Health Organization going, "Oh no, it can't be transferred human to human. We trust China." That was literally what they came out and said. I mean, you know why? I, because they deny a seat or even a hearing or even they deny any yeah, delivery of statistics or data to Taiwan, but even they, though it's a one-way relationship, you know, Taiwan did their best. They had emails and all that recorded, and then they right. published it to the well, world. Taiwan, like, hey, Taiwan 
yeah, Taiwan tried to warn people. And I, I just, it's just shocking. It, what's shocking to me is the number of people here that are like, oh no, they could look at all of that evidence in the face and go, oh no, I still trust China. China. I still trust China's <laughs> word over your guy's word. Uh, wow. I, don't know. I think you just need to fucking hang up, it. hang it up at that point. I think you're done. If that, that's what if I'm that's like, how, What's the point of, of them trying to fight for ha- having a seat in World War WHO anyway? No, they, you know, yeah. Yeah, what's like they've been fighting for twenty plus years now, and China just keeps denying it, right? And they yeah. only done like ninety million in funding versus American like four hundred ninety five. Apparently, it wasn't nine hundred fifty. I guess I was thinking about a two year budget, but technically, it's yeah. four fifty per year. So now Trump's yeah. saying, hey, he's going to fund the WHO. And look at the Democrats, like, oh, you're making this as a political statement. I'm like. No, they're just punishing organization that didn't do shit. Like, didn't yeah, tell the truth. They didn't they do shit. People. Like, I what mean, the heck? I, Bill Gates alone dumped $100 million into WHO. So, like, who cares? What, like, okay, so they're going to lose 400 and, you know, 400 odd million from us. Hey, they still got the, they still got that Bill Gates money. They got his rousing uh, support. Uh, yeah, good job. He's still he's still applauding them. Good job, guys. Yeah, Thanks. yeah this, this is great. This is this is scary, good stuff. Though. Scary to see who's really behind all this. And then there's just more articles I'm reading because I like Fauci and Burks. I do like mm-hmm. these two people are top advisors for medicals. You know, top medical top advisors for for Trump. But yeah. there's just more and more articles and serving evidence that you know there's been meetings with Fauci and. and Bill Gates and WHOs and like now we're just listening to Fauci about all this stuff and I'm just like man and he's so pro about really trying to shut down the government for another six months and Trump's just like no that's not gonna happen right and I'm just thinking like man man I wonder what this guy is up to right now because oh, I, I, I don't I, be- I try not to think in terms of that I mean it's it, it I yeah, it's fine. I just don't want to get me personally. I, I try to keep it simpler than that. You know, I, I can speculate that kind of stuff whenever, but I just, for me, I'm still like, I'm still falling out of my chair. The number of people that are like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Chinese government, they told us the truth. The problem is Trump didn't, like, what? What? Yeah, I am just that. The, to see how many people trust the CCP, which is com- communist um, Chinese party, Chinese Communist Party, but well, that's, I mean that's, that's the main I, one. Yeah, I don't know. At this point, I'm I'm not sure. Do I just do I just throw in the towel and just worship our new overlords and go? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, China so Microsoft. Popular. China Microsoft will tell us what to do. Good job, guys. Like what? <laughs> what do? What are you supposed to do? At that point, um, it's a, nobody ever, no one cares about the freedom and what America stands for really more anymore. I, I, I mean, uh, I, I, when I say nobody, like it's you know what I mean. Like, again, I, I, I don't want to go down that road. I, I still want to stay with because I, I think you lose too many people because you're polit. I, I think you're politicizing it the other way, and they start to see that. I just want us all to stop and think that you trust China over yeah. your own government. You trust China over the other, you know, half a dozen countries that spoke out against China thus far, including Australia. Okay, white people, here's some more white people that are also saying <laughs> we don't trust China either. When will you guys listen? Like, what does it? What does it take? Do, it, uh, that is so funny. I'm really it shocked. Me, it reminded me of one of, this, the, one of the guy protester in Hong Kong. Well, Stephen Crowder did like a short clip of what he said. He was like, Donald Trump don't trust China. China asshole. <laughs> he was like, it's, it's like a constant clip that Stephen plays. <laughs> Like it's great because like he captured all these Hong Kong protesters and then yeah. like what's going on and he presents it in such a straightforward fashion like 
people think he's a racist and you know he just like i don't i don't care he just he's just very blunt he offends people i get it i don't yeah. agree with him but i love it when these independent channels like literally show you what what's going on in hong kong or taiwan people, or it was or bad enough when people defended china what china did to hong kong that was already <laughs> bad enough for me wait what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised by that too. I you was like, defend China over Hong Kong? Are you fucking nuts? Did you yeah. did you just lose the plot because you just lost the plot? Are yeah. you serious? I it, I'm still it's t- it's going to take me 3 or 4 days to process this. The, the, people will fucking trust China. <laughs> Over their own family members, over, you know, multiple countries coming out and saying, fuck China. Really? Like, the, the brainwashing has gone above and beyond, man. It's, it's I can't, so bad. I don't know if it's brainwashing. It, it's brainwashing mixed with an arrogant level of stupidity. Because you have to be, especially the people who are, who are you know, covering their ears and going la 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 i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it like that's a brand new level of um ignorance that's willful (laughs) ignorance and they're being willfully they're being willfully ignorant to people that care about them that's the that's the part that's really you know i'll just tell you right now like I've, i've had some arguments in my family like with my wife and like i'm like wait a minute you're saying like you think that I am somehow not on your side. <laughs> like I'm somehow not in the interest of our family and our country because yeah. you want to take Bill Gates, you want to take Bill Gates' word and China's word over your fucking husband's word. Are you <laughs> crazy? Like you've, yeah. you've, you've lost it at that point. Like give up. Okay. Give up because it, it would be one thing if you took their word over mine and you had as much direct evidence as I do. That would be one thing because then you can actually have a debate and that kind of thing. But to, debate, shut it, yeah. to shut it all down and say, I don't even want to hear it. China is correct. <laughs> wow. Like what? Where, is this, say- where is this China money? Because we need this money. Like if, if you're getting paid by China, I want to know because we, you know, we could use that. Anyways, hey, what's up, Shadowcat? Hey, Octave. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be right back. I got yesterday call. Okay. Cool. All right. We're gonna lay off the, we're gonna lay off the anti-China stuff for a while here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint some Batman, and then they're gonna come and un, they're gonna pull the plug on me for saying bad things. <laughs> How dare you talk about bad about China? What? 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 Anyway, <laughs> hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, yeah, it. I'm just, I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked. I, you know, I, I, I come from. I think it's perfectly fine for people to dis- to disagree, and I think that's. I think that's another mark of, of you know, kind of today's, um, today's social atmosphere, right? There is this movement to make sure that nobody disagrees, right? It's that statement I'm always attacking. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. My mama told me if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't. No, fuck your mom. You're ruining the whole planet with that stupid attitude. If you don't have anything nice to say, you should probably say it, especially to the people you care about. That should be the saying. That should be the saying. Is this IDW? No, this is, uh, this is, these are the um, uh, monolith. This is the the, uh, monolith uh, Batman game, uh, season two, Gotham City Chronicles. They're super, super cool. I'm a fan of them, and uh, this guy's design is a little complicated. 
to get into, but we're gonna we're gonna paint these up. What have you been painting, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I, it's it's interesting. It's it's interesting to talk to. I don't know. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop. We're gonna talk about Batman. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about Batman. But I'm just gonna leave it at this. Fuck China. And if you trust China over your own government, what the hell are you thinking? Okay. What the actual fuck are you thinking? There you go. There you go. I'm just gonna just gonna leave that there. Okay. Just gonna drop that off. And we're going to move on. <laughs> Anyways. Chief Man of Bats. He is rather cool looking. Oh, Nelson's coming back in. All right. Okay. Welcome back. All right. So we are back on this topic. Batman Inc. is the topic. I know very little about these characters. Legion Stormtroopers. I hate painting white. I also hate painting white. But do you use a, uh, are you using the, the cool armor wash trick? That's actually quite cool. Or, you know, if you want to get a little more advanced, you can order, you can order a liner from, um, say, Tamiya. You know the those uh, Tamiya model model liners, uh, and you could use those on your stormtroopers, and they're gonna they're gonna get all those little lines and borders and details for you. I highly recommend that. Okay, let us. Okay, let's see. Somebody sent me a message. Could be the uh, the Chinese well, government sending me money to shut up, which I'm more than happy to take, China. I'll sell out shit. LeBron no. James, if LeBron James and Bill Gates can sell out, imagine how cheap you could get me, China. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Imagine how much cheaper I would be. No, you know. Anyways, I, I said I would lay off the, the China stuff. We're done. We're, we're done talking China stuff for now. <laughs> yeah, we're done for the night. We're done, for the night. <laughs> done for the night. And then they'll come by. And, yeah, they'll, they'll come by and, and uh, unplug me here in a minute. Okay, what did he say? He's come. They'll get Susan. You know Susan's on the take. That's all I'm going to say. Susan be loving that China money, man. Anyway. Chief Man of Bats. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is an old character design, right, Nelson? Like this guy, there's no way they you could get away with having this kind of character today. Yeah. It would be very uh, inappropriate. Yeah, so I, I think he's awesome. I think that's like a really cool character design, but you know. Do, 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 do. So one day we'll play this season two. When the COVID thing's over. When the COVID thing's yeah. over, I'll break out all all fifty pounds of this game, which is probably not an exaggeration. I don't I don't think that's an exaggeration. That the the, the two boxes I have that I carry are easily, they're probably 50 pounds, right? They're, those are probably 25 pound boxes because I, I stock, I, I stuff them to the gills with uh, minis and with, uh, with all the extra board sets and all that stuff. But with this season two, I can't even fit this in two boxes now. Now it's gonna be, um, I don't know, might have to be three boxes which is kind of ridiculous. It's cool that you get all that stuff for this game, but, you know, if I were to bring this down to CQ or to 
game craft or something like that so we can play. Um, I, I, I would have to figure out a way where I'm only bringing what I know we're going to play that night. Otherwise, we're looking at three or four boxes of just stuff. And then it's probably going to take me, you know, an hour or more just to dig up what we might play. You guys want to play Batman? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's play. Hold on. Just everyone go hang out over there for an hour while I set up this one game. So that's one issue that you can expect for Batman. And it's a, it's actually a pretty nice thing to be able to complain about because it's, you know, everybody goes nuts when you back a Kickstarter or whatever and you get all the things, right? That everybody goes like nutballs, like, oh my God, there's so much stuff in it. And you freak out and whatever. And then, it, but if you're like me and you look at it and go, okay, let's lay it all out and figure out how much time it's gonna take me to paint all this. It's just not as exciting. Everybody else like loves looking at the boxes and they, you know, they do unboxing videos and they, they, uh, they love to show them off that day that they got it. And then it inevitably like goes into storage somewhere. And uh, then, it, you know, then they might play a game or two with unpainted and then they get into something else, right? Something else, seems more exciting and then they just move up start with the beginning and then work up yeah we did that actually with the season one stuff um we were playing like i was bringing the season one stuff out regularly uh to game like to our our our, our game shop and to the local uh gaming brewery uh, I would carry these two giant boxes with me because at the at the very least, uh, if you're going to play Batman Gotham City Chronicles, you need to play two. You need to you need those two giant um, core boxes from season one to play anything. So even out of the gate, you're still you know carrying lugging those big old boxes with you. But it's all good, right? All right, man, this guy is pretty cool, i got to say. It is a very fun, it's, it's very, it's very fun to paint and collect all these. I mean, I've, I backed season two and then I immediately regretted it because board game Kickstarters for me have not been, uh, let's say they haven't been the best investments, right? And I, I talk about this uh, a lot that I'll back a Kickstarter and then paint all of it, no matter how many minis it comes with, I'll paint all of it. And then we sit down and play a board game and we might play it between one and we'll say three times on the outside and then it just goes away, right? So then I then it just it just sits here in my game room down here and then collects dust, which is super sad. But hey, I mean that's that's where it's at. That's that's where that's that's why like with Batman, I probably would have been fine just having season one and uh, you know, we played season one like ten times in a ten times or so. And then we stopped playing it. So I guess that was a decent return on investment. It was definitely more than what we normally do when I paint a board game. Um, I will say you've been working on Operation Ice Storm. Oh, nice. There's great minis in that set. Very nice minis in that set. Anyway, um, one thing that I do regret selling because my son and I have been playing it constantly has been – um shadows of brimstone right shadows of brimstone has been like the like a major big deal in our house during quarantine <laughs> it's like the secret savior of this house uh, for me and my son because uh, it's a fantastic game you know he's he he's uh, young, but he's bright enough to keep up with the game. He loves his characters. 
Um, he's excited to see what we run into next. And then, you know, we, because he and I are, are, we're prolific painters, the we can stay on top of the painting schedule. And when we buy something for Shadows of Brimstone, we can paint it and then get playing it, get to playing it very quickly. So, so I, I just thought that for him and I, that we would be into a different game. I thought that maybe, uh, you know, Relic Blade was, was very promising. Uh, I thought that maybe he would uh, be into something like My Little Scythe. Um, and he likes those games. You know, those, those games are good enough, but he really got into uh, uh, Shadows of Brimstone. And so that was a really cool thing to, to be able to break that out and have him like enjoy it. All right. And I'm just going to give this a quick shade down so that there we go. Just a quick shade down. All right. Kind of tone it down a little bit and I'll highlight it back up. I just want to get some of the feather detail. There we go. And then we'll do this. Um, so yeah, selling the Western sets for Shadows of Brimstone is something I regret. Um, I th I'm pretty, at this point, I'm pretty close to just throwing in the towel and rebuying the set and repainting it. But uh, maybe even just repainting it so that my son and I have something we can collaborate on because he's he's been painting, um, like he painted the Flesh Mites and he, play, he painted a a uh, Joragono, Joragono Swamp Raptor, which is, which turned out awesome, right? I'm like so proud of my kid and how cool, like the, the job that he did on it was so great. All right, looking pretty good so far. But uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, I, be, I keep talking about doing a potential live stream of some Shadows of Brimstone, just like the old days, right, Shadow Cat? High Noon looks like a nice Kickstarter. I, yeah, God, I need to not look at Kickstarter. Need to not look at Kickstarter. Because, you know, during this time, I will back something. Um, I, I might look for another like cooperative board game that me and my son could paint up and play. But right now it looks like Shadows of Brimstone is, is kind of doing it for us. So we'll, we'll let that ride for a bit. Okay. Just... Ooh. It's not always the best. This these style bases are not always the best to deal with. Let's go ahead and oh man, I am actually might be starting to run out of black. That's scary. Scary, scary. Yeah. It's mainly I just need to get off my ass and, and get uh, have a good evening where, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, otherwise preoccupied watching kids or, uh, catching up on commissions. That's what I need. I need a clear night where I could just go be down here and be like, okay, I'm just going to set up the board. Uh, but I can't do, I can't, it's very hard for me to schedule that in advance. You know what I mean? Because you just never know, like if the night, if that night is going to be clear, or whatever. I tried to do that before. Um, it was actually uh, harder for the for the people, the players to, to commit to a night. Um, <laughs> it was actually harder for them to do it uh, than for me. I don't know. Maybe I should take that personally. 
because <laughs> I know they're they're busy and whatever. You know, we're all adults, but I'm like, yeah, but you're not. I don't think you're busier than I am. <laughs> Anyways, it's all priority, right? I get it. Maybe you just wanted to play Animal Crossing or something, and you didn't want to, you know, want to mess around with looking at a a board through a monitor and telling me to move your piece x spaces or whatever all right get a little bit more white back on to this guy's headdress this character is really cool he is really cool i think his color palette the color palette itself could probably use a bit of a, a modernization right maybe not so much bright green and maybe a little more a little, a slightly darker tone to him would be cool. Oh, there you go. He's not bad. Let's uh, let's work on this dude. So this dude is mostly white. So uh, so we're going to take a we're going to take a what I call a close to white color, especially if it is a cool color. And start. I wonder who up. that is. This is Dark Ranger. You I don't know. If, it, I, yeah, he's. Let's, let's see. Hold on a sec. Dark Ranger. He is. Uh, he battles crime in the land down under. So he's he's an Australian affiliate of Batman's. I do not know why all these Australians. I was gonna say, is are he related dressed... to Captain? <laughs> why are they all dressed like they live in a cold weather climate? Shouldn't this dude be? He's Australian, right? Shouldn't he be in a tank top and flippy flip flops with a jetpack on? He's me jetpack, mate. <laughs> Here I go, flying around, fighting crime. <laughs> terrible. My Australian accent is terrible. I do love my Aussies, though. All right. I thought, I thought that was pretty good. I'm watching this, <laughs> so I have Wrong. to mute myself, but that was pretty good. <laughs> Glacier blue, which is going to look white on your screen, probably. Are you looking him up? He had, he had a, uh, he was originally Dark Ranger and Scout. And I guess the original Dark Ranger died. So Scout kind of took up the mantle here. Oh, Dark Ranger died. His helmet is pretty awesome. He's got kind of a kind of a Cobra Commander style, like full, fully enclosed visor helmet. It's me, my Dark Ranger. There we go. So what else is going on, Nelson? I was going to ask you, uh, is now a good time to do... Uh, to do refi. How did I do the flames? I haven't done anything to the flames yet, Shadow Cats. Really just uh, I end in yellow. Uh, I just blocked out the color. 
Is this a is this a good can you know if you don't want to talk about this online we can we could talk later. But well, I mean I've been extremely busy, so the market is still pretty volatile and I've been doing a lot of loans. I think I money wise, I definitely made company a lot of money, so that I but um for borrowers in there, I mean some of them are getting into the low threes, just depends on the credits and other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and like, I, I've been getting people into three and a half and maybe even even three and a quarter, so. Nice. So yeah, definitely less interest and less monthly payment. So if they are planning on staying in the current home for a while, since the equity grew, why not? Yeah. I mean, that might be the boat that, that I'm in, or, you know, we, we talked about the other scenario, like, hey, if, if we're in a, if, if we're in a, a financial recession or whatever, it might be kind of a buyer's market for getting into a bigger house. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know uh, what's the better move uh, for us. I also have to look and, and check my credit and see how that's going. Uh, you know, I had pretty good credit for the most part, but you always, I always got to just see where I'm at, see where my wife is at and her credit. Um, obviously my, my credit could be going down because I'm talking shit about China. So my, my social credit <laughs> score is going to go down. <laughs> we well, heard is. you. Luckily, we don't have to worry about social credits, right? We don't have to worry about credit and social credit and all that stuff. As of today, that shit is coming. You know they're going to be about that. You'll, you'll start hearing, uh, uh, you know, who are the rich people we like again? We like Bill Gates and we like... Uh, uh, Bloomberg. I'm not talking. When I say we, I don't mean anyone in this channel. <laughs> I mean we, the generic mainstream. I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's my guy. Totally, yeah, we should have social credit score. <laughs> They're gonna. Somebody's gonna do that. Some one of these fucking oligarchs is gonna do that. It's gonna end up in front of John Oliver or some shit. Oh, John's really intellectual. We should totally do social credit. God damn it. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, man. I'm just doom and gloom tonight. I, I'm not the best company. <laughs> All right. But we're working, we're working on white. So this is... So you saw what I did, right? I, I started with... Uh, uh, Griff, Griff Charger Gray as the undercoat and then built that up with Glacier Blue. Again, that looks very, it should look very white on your screen. This is a way to build up white really quickly and leave, uh, leave the good detail on the model. Leave that good detail on the model. I hate talking politics over what about the clown cutting funding to the, oh man, no, no, dude. I want to get into it. We no. just went no. into this. Do not, China. Do not back China. Do not back China. Okay, no. don't, just don't. That person is just listening to the fake news, I'm sorry. Just, just don't back China, please. You're, you're arguing in favor of China. Don't do that. For the love of God, there is a mountain of evidence to suggest that they were hand in hand with China and not just evidence, like direct communication from the WHO denying, you know, uh, giving, giving all the leeway to China and then, uh, and then outright dismissing Taiwan and a number of the other um, the other countries in the region that are like, no, China's a fucking liar. Don't trust those guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that that's where we stand. Or that's where I stand. I, I'm positive that's where where uh, where Nelson stands. 
So yeah, I, I, I get it. It's the World Health Organization. It sounds crazy on, on, pay, on its face. It sounds crazy that you would want to defund something called the World Health Organization. It sounds crazy that you would want to defund something that, you know, Bill Gates thinks, a, you know, that he just donated a hundred million to, and he's, he's such a bright guy, right? That all sounds crazy, but you have to, you have to consider that they just outright, that, that they had buried all of China's lies and walked toe to toe with them and lied to the rest of the world. So if you don't, if like, like I was saying earlier, you don't have to, you don't have to like Trump. I don't care. I don't care if you like Trump. You don't have to, you don't have to back his policies. You don't even have to listen to the United States. I don't care if you don't listen to the United States. You know what though? Listen to Taiwan, listen to Japan, listen to India, listen to Singapore, listen to everybody else in the region that is saying, fuck China and fuck the WHO because Dang. they know what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah. That's all there is to it. I don't care how you feel about the United States or Trump or whatever. Okay. There are enough people that were watching the scorecard the same way we were going, wow, these people sold the fuck out and they need to get the fuck out. That's all we're saying. That's all we're saying. You know, it would be great if we had a World Health Organization that hadn't. <laughs> okay, I've done an unboxing of. <laughs> it's okay, it's all right, it's okay. But I just, you know, I I get it. I I get that it sounds crazy. It really does. It sounds crazy until you look at the actual physical scorecard and go, wait a minute, they said what? Well, wait a minute. That's not true. Well, wait a minute. Why did they hang up when we started talking about Taiwan? What? <laughs> what? You got to, I would be more than happy to share this information with anybody that, that it, because again, if you were to walk up to me out of the blue and I was uninformed about the situation and you said, we're going to defund the World Health Organization. I would say that just sounds fucking nutballs. That sounds like the dumbest idea ever. But then when you, but if you, you, if you actually followed what they did, and more importantly, what they didn't do, then you'd be like, yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, it's, right. It's, it really, it honestly, don't takes, listen to me again. Don't listen to me. Listen to Japan, listen to India, listen to Singapore. Don't listen to me. I don't care if you don't, if you don't trust me, fine. Listen to those other countries for fuck's sakes, at least, because they don't have an agenda. They got no political dog in this fight. But they're just calling out, you know, they're going to call bullshit. Anyways, I think, I think we're done. I think we're done talking to... Uh, uh, World Health Organization. <laughs> Anyways, oh man, yeah, the white's white's coming out pretty good. Yeah, that's it. it will be better, okay, because I'm just growing too much white hair for each time someone says those kind of stuff. Yeah, just slap in the face. Well, I get it. I mean, people are walking into people are walking into that headline. We're doing what? That sounds crazy. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it sounds crazy. But but imagine something being so crazy that like everybody else in the same region as China is like fuck those guys. <laughs> uh, and imagine you know just oh, okay we're done we're done. Yeah all right back to Night Ranger or Dark Ranger or whatever. <laughs> Power Rangers. Power Ranger. So, yeah, the, the artwork has the flames as just re being really, like, boring and bad, kind of. I don't know. I could do something more interesting with the flames, I guess. But he's, he's pretty simple when it comes down to it. Not much. 
not much to do here. Let's do, okay. So he's got a little bit, his visor is actually a really neat color. And we're gonna, we're gonna play around with a little glaze here to make this happen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a really thin glaze here. So in other news, there are a bunch of people that are trying to revive old miniature games right now, which is interesting. There's like a bunch of, there's, a, for example, there is a movement of people trying to bring back Hell Dorado. I don't know if you played that. Have you played El Dorado, Nelson? Ever played that game? No, but I've seen you guys play it. It looked interesting. But... It's a really cool game. It was like one of our one of our longstanding favorite games for a miniature game system. Um, there, uh, so there's like this. There's a group of the old people that uh, used to promote the game that have all kind of banded together to see, you know, what kind of life they have left for the game or even try to buy the rights for the game off Asmodee. We'll see. Oh, so it's owned by Asmodee? Yeah. Like El Dorado yeah, I mean... was a, it, it was a pretty important property for a while. Um, if you've ever heard of the game Claustrophobia, uh, yes, I just never played it. That is a really fun game. It's kind of like Space Hulk, but it takes place in hell. Um, and it, you're basically these uh, explorer guys uh, from generally from Europe, but they also have like a uh, they have like a China faction in that game. Um, that's super cool that that I used to play. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's almost like the, um, the 16th century uh, colonization of Africa, but instead of Africa, they're colonizing hell, uh, which is really interesting. And the game was a, a really fun, like skirmish level game. You played it on a, um, a 30 inch by 30 inch board and all you would the before the game, you and your opponent would um, would set down the terrain, and there were there was a it's almost like this mini game that you played before the game started, where the location is determined, and then you and your opponent start adding uh, bits of terrain onto the board in specific quadrants according to a point system. And it made for like really dynamic uh, gameplay. Um, I had mixed feelings about the terrain system myself because I'm like, yeah, it's really interesting, but I wish there was a quick start to terrain because I don't, I don't want setup to take too long. There's sometimes where you know we want to play something fun and narrative, and therefore it would make sense to run the full terrain rules. But some nights it's like you know we want to play two or three games. And it would be nice if we could just uh, jump right into a game and have a generic set of rules for setting terrain down. But the game had had it actually had a lot of um, cool mechanics, and some of those mechanics were things that would actually still do pretty well in modern day gaming. So they had the attacker charts that are very similar to, say, Guild Ball style attack charts. Um, so that was really interesting. There's a command point system, which is almost like, it's almost like an influence system. So again, there's some, you know, there's a lot of things that would do very well uh, for that game in, in today's uh, skirmish game land, I guess. So yeah. the turns, the, uh, if I understood you correctly, is, does it, is it almost like dungeon crawl? board game or are you just yeah the, well, you go? that's claustrophobia yeah claustrophobia is is a dungeon crawl style game but one player is controlling 
the um, the explorers, and the other player is controlling the um, uh, the demons. So, um, it, it, so it has that dungeon crawl feel to it, but it is kind of more like a head to head game. Um, where one person's playing, you know, instead of AI and cooperative, you're, you're playing against another player. All right. I'm starting to like this guy. He's got a pretty, he's got a pretty cool design to him. Okay. <laughs> so tell me about this Walking Dead uh, 6, Nelson. This what? time they kind of focus more on the, um, the characters that happened in Hilltop. So Hilltop characters are more like blacksmiths and farmers. Okay. So, but I mean, gameplay wise, this doesn't really reflect that whatsoever, but it just character names are a little bit more um, noticeable. Like, it's there's some of the quick characters that we, we never seen, like in this game at least. Okay. We've seen the comics, we've seen the TV series, but they're brand new characters to the game. So, which is good because a lot of people who played this game have been waiting for a long time for these characters. So, so the game itself is like a it's like a head-to-head -head miniature game can you is there like a is there like a co-op version of the game or a semi-co-op version of the game well this like camping and story modes kind of yeah yeah so is there i guess what i'm asking is is, is there like a is there like a zombicide mode of the game where um, you have, uh, you know, where, where a bunch of people play a team of survivors versus, you know, uh, either an AI zombie control or one player controlling zombies? Or it, it's um, more of a, you know, survivors versus survivors and zombies are kind of the, the game variable in between them? Well, in this game, zombies do not have technically do not have their own activation. The, okay. uh, on, a rare, on a rare occasion, it's just based on event cards, right? Each turn is like one or two event cards, really depends. But um, when you do solo play, or uh, like you can uh, technically have two or three people that plays on the same team, but then it just, the zombie just would react to what you do. Much similar like zombie side, but mm -hmm. the gameplay mechanic does, is, it's a lot different because it's a miniature game. It's not a board game. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's unique. I've never played a game where just, I don't know, just zombies just behave very differently in that game. So I like it a lot more. It looked really cool the other day uh, when, when I saw you and uh, Jason playing it. Um, you know, how it's set up and uh, the terrain looked really fun for that game. And then I was like really into like, oh man, or, you know, if when you guys gonna randomly get grabbed by a zombie in the middle of your turn. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, that's usually doing like a search or something. Like obviously the objective is not to really kill your opponent. That's, that's never gonna be the case really. Um, it's about searching for supplies or supply tokens or completing um, completing certain objectives and sometimes when you do supply crate run or like researching supply tokens mm -hmm. um, yeah you just randomly flip a you know item card or event card and sometimes you just have zombies come out of nowhere this is cool yeah, yeah. kind of like zombies in a way but you know the thing about um like Zombicide, is I will like straight out come out and tell you that it's not a good game. <laughs> like it's it's not from a from a like 
you know, I want to play something really intricate uh, and, you know, well-designed and, and balanced in that standpoint, it's not really good for that. Zombicide is like, yeah. you're like, it's more of like a, a video game, right? It's more <laughs> like a coin op, like, okay, well, let's try to get our power ups and let's try to, you game the game that way. And then basically waiting on your dice to roll decent. It's not like a big, deep, thinky game, like a, like a, a rising sun or anything like that, but it's a great entertaining game. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, a, it, it's just a beer and pretzel game. Yeah. Let's just, let's throw a bunch of models on the board and, um, you know, let's see who, who can survive this and then, uh, and then just try to enjoy a game there. Check this dude out. El Gacho. El, El Gaucho. Catch you. <laughs> All right, Shadow Cat. Have a good one. Take it easy. Thanks for stopping in. All right. So Shadow Cat had to take off. Um, I am going to El Gaucho. Really love the design on this guy. Here's another guy that probably would not be well received in today's <laughs> culture, right? Santiago Vargas. He's a man of mystery. He worked for the covert operation agency known as Spiral, but eventually followed Batman's example and joined the Club of Heroes. So he, what country is he from? Oh, Argentina and other parts of South America. Okay. Cool. Good job, Santiago Vargas. Yeah, he's, I, I think he's got an awesome character design. Oh man, hold on. My cat wants out. Ugh. All right, here we go. Okie doke. Doot, doot, doot. Okay. So how many uh, how many minis came in this wave for Walking Dead? Um, there's total. Uh, I think without counting zombies. Hold on. I think there's like. Eight, maybe seven or eight. Probably eight, I think, without counting for the new Ezekiel, which he hasn't come in yet. That was has that was actually a separate order, but um Okay. Yeah. Cool. Should be should be the same amount without nice. counting for the zombies. So cool. Okay. So there's another Ezekiel in this set. Yeah, with just a different pose. I, I'm not actually, I'm not a big fan of the new pose, and I was hoping he'll wear something else different too, but it's pretty much just that like sucks. His, yeah, but his stack cards are, this one's definitely a lot better. Nice. The previous, one, previous one, he was pretty much like a powerhouse with him and Shiva, which is a tiger, mm -hmm. but this one is a lot more um, like boosting other survivors. Oh, sit down, please. All right. Let's see. Um, what? I oh, here we go. Okay. So we're gonna do. Maybe I should do the darker jeans. Yeah, the darker jeans will make him look fancier. Let's do the darker. The 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 newer jeans we'll call them. Do, 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 do. Dude, this guy's character design is just great. I don't even know if I want to paint eyes in here. I don't think it would work anyway. I think it works better. It's one of those rare instances where I don't want to put the eyes on the mini because 
it looks correct without the eyes. <laughs> this il gaucho. I was going to say, can you even see the eyes on this? Not really. I think if I paint the eyes in, he'll look like, uh, uh, what's his name from Fat Albert? He'll look like Dumb Donald. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious, but I don't want to do that for this. I think he'll look better without him. Good old El Gaucho. It would be kind of cool to see a team of people playing as Batman Inc. They don't even have Batman Inc. in uh, in the night game. That was a cool. Batman Jap of Japan is the most hilarious looking guy. I've never seen him before. Oh, here, I'll, I'll show him in a minute. Let me just get this blue down. Like these are the cool thing is they paint up pretty quick, right? Because they're usually really intense colors, so you don't need to do you don't actually want to do Hey, buddy. Make to sleep, son. And then you have uh, this guy, uh, Night Runner. He's like a French parkour Batman guy. <laughs> that guy's awesome. All right, so let's do Mr. Gaucho. Yeah. So you still you're still working from home, right? Yeah, and I think that um, I don't know. I, I think um, the Trump is talking about having everyone possibly just slowly releasing um the self quarantine program thing. Yeah, um, it's up to the state, of course, but I think well, his plan is by the end of the month. Right, but I, I think Gavin Newsom, he was talking about um, um, us doing basically whatever. They're working on a plan that would mirror what people, what they're going to do in Oregon and Washington and I think Nevada. So there's like the West Coast states of all they're all kind of working on whatever their return to work plan is. And I would imagine it's going to be, I imagine it's going to be later than May 1st. Absolutely. But I do think they're going to have some restrictions lifted by May 1st, right? Like you said, it's probably going to be a trickle back kind of deal. And then, uh, but I don't think, I don't think there's going to be much of a return to work um, on May 1st. For me, it, it really doesn't even matter because I'm basically back to work. Um, I just, one thing I do now that I was kind of doing before anyway, is um, I'll, I'll do more afternoon meetings from home. That's really the only major change for me. I didn't really, I didn't really change that much. All right, El Gaucho. 
but are you still kind of like rotating your facilities? So I know you said that not not both sites aren't fully functional, right? You're kind of like having half and half almost. Yeah, I, I expect that tomorrow uh, they already we we have most of the second facility back. So by tomorrow, by end of day tomorrow, we should be back at full capacity. But I'm still holding back, you know, some of my workforce. So they're, the, the folks that can work at home are going to continue to work from home. And then, uh, and then I'm going to run a like skeletal crew on site. Um, and that will happen at least, uh, as I see it, it will happen at least until, um, at least until May first. But I'm I'm looking at it like that's probably going to continue to June first, in my opinion, because I have. I have 75% of my workforce back. So I'll have 75% of my workforce back and I'll have um, I'll have both my labs back and I can justify having, you know, some people still working from home. So I'm gonna keep it that way until I'm told otherwise. It shouldn't it's pretty, be awesome that your company lets you to run all the stuff though to coordinate what you know who's to come back now and all stuff. Yeah, it's it's it it's actually um it's not really the company, it's the specific autonomy I have within my reporting structure, right? My boss, you know, entrusts me to go, okay, you you know you know when your people need to be back so you can decide. Um, just make sure that you know everybody's safe. We're we're listening, obeying all of the uh, company guidelines as well as all the state guidelines for social distancing and all that. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm lucky that my boss has always pretty much let me run my department however I I, I see fit. So you know when all this went down, he just asked me like okay what's your plan and i said okay we're gonna do this this and this and he was he's like okay well good you got a plan okay good and he just he'll just support my plan as long as it's you know as long as i'm not like crazy out of line with what the the company wants and as long as we still make um as long as we still meet our objectives and our goals for productivity we'll be fine Sounds like a director pushing. Would be, be nice. Uh, would be, would, yeah. would be nice. Should be lined up next, man. Still, still going for that. Oh man. As long as I, I just can't. I gotta stop going online and talking shit about China, and I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll just right? stay. <laughs> Look at how much uh, percentage of contents or raw material that you need from China. Then yeah, I yeah. Have to that back. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, delete this feed and then I'll come back and go. Hey guys, hey, I'm sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> it, was, it was Orange Man who hmm. shocked him. Yeah, <laughs> it was the Russians because you know all that's true. Remember that Russian plot? Ran for three. Yeah. All, Adam Schiff didn't make up any of that. No, that was that was all true. I, I tell you who my favorite person is right now is is Hunter fucking Biden. <laughs> that <laughs> dude has the greatest life of all time. That's all I'm gonna say. He has the great this dude knows nothing about energy. He knows nothing about consulting. But he just gets – they just ship him buckets of money from Ukraine and from China. And then anytime anyone tries to call him on it, dude has like six or seven major news networks and like an entire political party screaming back. Like imagine – and he doesn't have any real power. Guy has the best life ever. 
Yeah, I'm sure he's done some research about him. I mean, he's no saint either. So that's what I'm saying. He got doesn't even out maybe I cocaine, mean, got some stripper pregnant and just dis- disowned yeah, even, trying to deny it, everything. <laughs> like, wow. Dude is a fucking legend as far as I'm concerned. Like that yeah. should be we, How great we, asshole, we impeached a president. We impeached a president for something that that fool was doing clearly corrupt. <laughs> he was engaging <laughs> cl- and at no point, at no point did anyone say, uh, you know, anyone on the other side go, hey, you know what, that country Bri- Biden's kind of a prick though. <laughs> Nobody stopped to say that. Yeah. Was like, you know, he, he actually stole money from us in, in reality because we're the one that's funding Ukraine defense contract or energy bills, right? I'm telling so you, the guy, is a, our money. the guy is a straight up <laughs> fucking legend. Like, he, it, you cannot be, I've never seen anybody that protected, especially somebody as politically useless as Hunter Biden. Right, we're we're just gonna do all these favors for you. Oh, don't worry about it, Hunter. We got your back. Everyone's got his back, and he needs to do nothing. It's not like Hunter Biden could ever repay any of these people that are giving him kickbacks or giving him money. It's all his. It's all his dad. It's all you know. His dad and his dad's political connections, and not even yeah. and even beyond that, it's like. Because his dad is basically going through dementia right now. Senile. It's, it's not even his dad anymore. They're still protecting him. Like people are fucking there are journalists willing to just lay all their credibility on the altar of sacrifice just so this fucking chode can snort cocaine and collect money once a month. Like how much of a legend do you have to be? To be that guy. Can you imagine that the stories this guy tells his friends? He's like, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. They sent, uh, so I went to Ukraine and, uh, yeah, uh, I had cocaine and two hookers sent up directly to my room. It was cool, right? Yeah. My dad totally just ignored it. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> imagine being that guy. <laughs> that guy didn't have, he never worked a hard day in his life. Not once, not once. And worst case scenario, if and when any of, you know, if and when there is any sort of reckoning whatsoever, and I doubt there will be, but if there was ever a reckoning, all of that is going to land squarely in his dad's lap. He doesn't even have to pick up the check at the end of the day. Even if some, if, even if, if, even if there was a crazy investigation and people actually unearthed a bunch of facts and the stupid public was actually could let go of this orange man bad shit long enough to look at objective fact and go, wow, this guy is a world class douchebag that is just living off of all of us and his dad's political clout. Even if all of that really happened and we really wanted to nail people to the wall it wouldn't be his head on a spike it would be his dad's dude would probably walk off scot-free his punishment would be not getting buckets of money from ukraine (laughs) right Uh, yeah Uh, no one's gonna be like oh hunter biden we need to we need to uh you know we need to bring him up on federal charges nobody will do that nobody will because he doesn't he's not an important enough political scalp he's a small fish compared to he, his dad he, right. Obama, nailing hunter biden means nothing uh it, it, it's really just a means to get at joe biden and the democrats right if because no matter you know th- i guess what i'm saying is justice will never be served in his case because even if you did get to a point where you can prove to the court of public opinion that this guy's fucking corrupt even then they would still go after his dad and he would still just be a guy bragging about that shit 
Yeah, I mean, they, he <laughs> Joe Biden denied it. I don't know how many times, but then they have records of him flying with Hunter to Ukraine. Hey, what's up, Andre? Times. You guys talk like me and my friends. Great to hear some intelligent conversation. Thanks, man. We try. But like, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't I? I you know, when in the '90s, I used to think that the guy who had the greatest life of all time was the "Can you hear me now?" guy. I thought that guy had the best life of all time in the 90s. Because you think about it, like in the 90s, all that dude ever had to do, and he did probably two dozen commercials, right? And he only needed to know one fucking line. And he would walk on set, he says his line, they record it, and then he gets a check every single time one of his commercials plays. Imagine yeah. being that guy. You have to have no talent whatsoever. You are just that guy. And I'm like, man, if I could pick anything to be in life right now, I would be the can you hear me now guy. Because <laughs> his day of work is like, oh, yeah, I'm totally going to go in today and shoot another commercial. What are you doing in the commercial? Oh, I don't know. Do you need to memorize anything? No, nah, I know my one fucking line. And you walk, and you walk on set and you say your line. And then you just make money and you're yeah. done. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, or they, maybe they even shoot like three or four different commercials that day. And like um, my ex was in one commercial. She was in one commercial and they only showed the commercial in California. And it was only like on local stations. OK, but she got checks every day. <laughs> For just this one obscure commercial, right? It was just she would just get get checks, and it wasn't they weren't big checks, but they were a few hundred dollars, right? And you're getting a few hundred dollars, uh, you know, every month. You're probably for one commercial. She was making like an extra, we'll call it an extra twelve hundred dollars a month. For for one, com she was in one commercial. She was, by the way, she had no speaking lines in the commercial, and she was in the commercial for less than three seconds, and she made an additional twelve hundred bucks a month. So I, I saw that, and I was like, God, imagine what the "Can you hear me now?" guy, what he fucking makes, yeah, for saying one line. So in the '90s, I thought. This guy has the best life of all time. And we argued this back and forth. It's like, oh, well, what if he was really an aspiring actor and he wanted to win an Oscar and be thought of as a serious, uh, you know, a seriously dramatic person? I'd be like, fuck that. This guy only has to know one line. And he's rich forever. He could go into bars. Girls will want to fuck him just for sport. Like, think about that. Like, oh, yeah, I totally fucked the, the can you hear me now guy. That guy <laughs> had the best life in the 90s. Now, fast forward to 2020, the person who has the best fucking life right now, Hunter fucking Biden. Nobody hey, can touch Hunter. Hunter Biden does not need to do shit. Say what you want about LeBron James or even Kylie fucking Jenner or any of these these douchebags that make <laughs> millions and millions of dollars, right? Say what you want about them. They still have to do something. Hunter Biden doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to do anything. And they just send him buckets of money. He gets mainstream media protection. Uh, the fucking, the amount of people who will lay down their careers, their credibility, their personal livelihood for this piece of shit corrupt guy? Tell me there isn't anybody who has a you know a, a more carefree, responsible, responsibility, accountability free life than this dude. Like he he's it, dude. That that's like that's what you that's like the golden goose. You want to be a political douchebag tool like Hunter Biden. And he, at, at the end of the day, let's say, you know, 10, 15 years from now, he's going to be the answer to a question in Trivial Pursuit. 
and girls will still want to sport fuck the guy. Jeez. Think about that for a second. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the can you hear me now guy? He did. He's like, you know what? I'm going to work for Sprint now. That guy has a fucking great life too. <laughs> he's like, well, <laughs> now you knew me as the can you hear me now guy for, the, for AT&T. Now I'm the can you hear me now guy for Sprint. Still collecting that cash, yo. <laughs> like imagine being these guys. They have the best lives ever. Oh, man. I remember the um, Ulse guy? <laughs> the Ulse guy? Get, yeah. Are you in good hands? Oh, yeah, that guy. That guy has an, yeah, that guy has an amazing voice. He actually, yeah, that guy was pretty cool because, like, he did a bunch of movies and stuff uh, before that. And he's always had a really cool voice. Um, that guy's cool. But, you know, you ain't going to have, like, uh, um, uh, you aren't going to have like Chris Cuomo or, or uh, uh, you know, ABC News or you're not going to have NPR laying their credibility on the line to back that guy. But for Hunter fucking Biden. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holy yeah. crap. You know, someday I, I could just only picture myself like this conversation someday <laughs> on my deathbed. I shit myself before I take the last breath. Instead of being scared, I was just think of these conversations like, wow, this life is so fucking ironic. This world is shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're, you're on your deathbed and you're like, you know what? I had it pretty good. But you know who had it really good? Hunter Biden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hunter Biden. You think like... Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, another guy I used to talk about, Scott Bayo, right? Scott Bayo is, is he's in the man, uh, he's in the man hall of fame because of all the fine ladies Scott Bayo has been with, right? He's like legendary for being with all the hottest women in like the, the late eighties to nineties or whatever. There's just, there's just people that have charmed lives like that. <laughs> Scott Bayo fucking chachi that dude that's crazy to me but yeah the, the new one is definitely hunter biden let me know in, in the chat if you guys can <laughs> think of somebody who has a, a more of a cush life than hunter biden because i can't i can't think of one i remember there was a very brief period where i was like man this anthony weiner guy he's kind of got it made and then they found his laptop <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. Well, yeah, that guy's done. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'm, I might be the only person that thinks of stuff like that, though. But, like, I look at it's a true, story. Though. I look at I look at a story like Ukraine and all that. And I'm like, damn, that Hunter Biden, man. Especially when you see, uh, you know, all these people getting into arguments about it. And just how, you know, just how impassioned people get and, uh, and just how badly they lay into one side or the other. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't even matter what side, you know, you're on for a story like that. You, we can a all agree. Winner. Yeah, He's we can all. <laughs> the one person who truly won from all of that, Hunter fucking Biden. <laughs> Find your dollar, buddy. You going upstairs? Yeah. Good night, buddy. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> Am I keeping you awake? Yeah. Sorry, kiddo. Love you, kiddo. Get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So I cat. guess um, you should be your inspiration how to train your kid to be like that. Oh, jeez. I want to, but. Okay. It's instead too, of oil company, it's painting companies. <laughs> I I would if I had that, you know, if I had that Biden political clout. You know what I mean? We're talking those guys have like generational clout, like the like the Bushes, right? The Bushes or the Cuomos or the Kennedys, you know, those families that have yeah. like God. 
just imagine like we make fun of like Jeb Bush or Billy Bush or whatever. And you're like, yeah, those guys got it easy. You know, you can even make fun of uh, Chris Cuomo. You're like, yeah, the guy's brother is, you know, he's the real deal. And he's the guy that's, uh, you know, governor in New York or whatever. And Chris Cuomo is just kind of the, he's just kind of the hanger on, the, the little brother hanger on guy. But damn it, Hunter Biden, he don't need, man, that guy, <laughs> he don't need anything. We're gonna start the. Uh, we're gonna start that fan club. We're gonna. Uh, we'll make T-shirts. Hunter Biden is our hero, or something. <laughs> <laughs> and people will be so mad. They're like, "Where me, Hunter Biden?" I'm like, "Well, think about it." <laughs> you just, then you explain. Then you pl- then you make your case that Hunter Biden is the most charmed person on planet Earth, and why. And they can't deny that. I mean, I would, game. I would rather I have. <laughs> How about I would, him? I would rather have that level of impunity or immunity than you know than than billions of dollars. In fact, I, I think being a billionaire is kind of a bad thing. I think you want to be, and, and you feel free to disagree with me. But I think that the sweet spot is to be a multi-millionaire because you are not you are not intimately involved in the fabric of the economy. You're just profiting off of the the higher percentage of it, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like being a billionaire, yeah. like managing your money as a billionaire is your life. Like that is, and money becomes, it's, it's almost an abstract concept to you, but yet your whole life is around, uh, is around managing your fortune. Whereas if you were just a, if you were, you know, if you had, if you were worth say two or 300 million, okay, there's, you, you have complete and ultimate financial freedom, but you are not, you are not part of the machine, so to speak. You don't have yeah. to. Be. You you. Get... <laughs> All right, so we got some. Con- he isn't the first kid to get a bull, a bull, calm job, which is true. You're right, Andre, but he may be the first and only person that is completely immune to both sides of a, of a total political divide. That's what I'm <laughs> getting at. He may be the only person in history. That was that is, um, you know, unanimously defended by all of the major mainstream media, um, with with absolutely no merit, other than you know he's on the he's on the side that that we want to protect. That's the only that's the only thing he does, and he does not. He, he has no active role in any of this, yet he is the only one who is um, undisputedly benefiting from all of it. You know what I mean? That would be like uh, – you could say similar things about Chelsea Clinton and you know the money that she's made, but Chelsea Clinton has never been – at the center of a political storm with complete confidence that no one ever wants to go after her, right? Yeah, because they get killed. (laughs) Yeah. Hunter Biden is like the, I I guess he's like the, the, uh, uh, he's like the smelly dog that's in the middle of a hostage crisis. Right. Neither side <laughs> fucking wants him, but they, they, you know, but he, he, he's in the middle of a hostage crisis and he's eating all of the food that's at the center of the, the restaurant where the crisis is going down and nobody on either side just cares to stop him or, <laughs> or even he just, you just tear whatever. There's a dog there. We're trying to kill each other. Uh, no one gives a shit about this dog. He's going to be the only one to survive all of this ultimately, or actually not just survive, but prosper out of it. 
<laughs> yeah, if there was no Trump in office, then the media would attack the Biden. Yes, you're probably right. If um, I think if uh, if Hillary Clinton had won the presidency, I think I, I can guarantee you they would the the media would go would go nuts after Biden because uh, you know the, the, he no longer has any uh, political value to that side of the fence. So you're absolutely right. They would uh, they they would go you know they would burn that family to the ground. <laughs> and he's still getting paid. I know this guy's this guy gets paid more per month than you know the top one percent of people living in a lot of states. And can we name one thing that this guy has contributed to in society? Can you name one? Can we even can we even name what he actually does? Like what? Like he has no uh, no political relevancy. He has no like no career skills. We know he's you know like like Nelson pointed out he um, you know he he was doing drugs and you know getting his getting his full enjoyment out of life. God, that guy, that guy. The only thing, the only thing that would make Hunter Biden more of a legend. And and if this happens, this guy needs to go in the Hall of Fame forever. Okay, but imagine 20 years from now, Hunter Biden is going to be uh, he'll probably be what like pushing 60. Okay, imagine imagine Hunter Biden pushing 60 60 years old, and then as as he's getting into the twilight years of his life, he decides to turn his life over to Jesus. Can you fucking imagine that? And then he becomes like an evangelist pastor and makes millions and millions of dollars telling people how corrupt his life was. <laughs> that would be the best ending to this story. The <laughs> of that one guy that you were talking about, like an uncle or something that was like related to to. Was it you, or Elizabeth? That oh, he lived his life, and then like every time a holiday meeting, it's like they're preaching about like you know, don't do this, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get a let me get a drink here. Yeah, that's like that's like Hunter Biden on a smaller scale. But yeah, it's uh, it's my wife's uh, my wife's uncle. Okay, so my wife's uncle, uh, he, um, you know, he, he had your typical life, um, but he was a, a typical like alcoholic, um, drug abuser, uh, you know, was married, I want to say three or four times, cheated on all of his wives, uh, you know, did rampant amount of drugs and alcohol, beat his wives, beat his kids, abandoned his kids, um, just... <laughs> just lived the shittiest douchebag life ever, right? And then finally, you know, guy starts pushing 50, 60 years old, and suddenly it's like, hey, you know who's been with me this whole time? It's been Jesus. <laughs> and so he turns his life over to Jesus and immediately goes into criticizing the rest of the family about how they're living. Holy fucking shit, man. Can you imagine being that? I can't even imagine being that privileged, man. I can't imagine that. Being the Asian kid in class that was always quiet but would get in trouble alongside all the rest of the kids when people were fucking loud. Like, <laughs> imagine being that kid. Imagine being the loudest kid in the classroom. Then when the teacher starts punishing all the other kids for being loud, he stands up and goes, you know what? You guys need to be quiet because I've turned my life over to Jesus. Now. <laughs> what a clown. <laughs> like that. Oh, my God. That is the way to be. I'm just saying <laughs> that, that these these guys are they're artists. OK, they yeah. they they are artists. The guys that can they get um, they they eat their cake and have it, too. 
the, oh. it's what it is, right? The, you know, they get, I remember uh, they would stand up, uh, in, I, you would see this uh, like in your local church or whatever. There'd always be some guy, uh, you know, in his, in his uh, you can tell he's in his mid fifties to sixties and he stands up in front of the church. You can see he's like tatted out. You know, he's got that bulk. He's got like that, like he used to be really muscular like 10 years ago, maybe when, when he was in prison or whatever, and he gets up and, you know, his name was like, hey, you know, I'm going to tell you my story. It's real sad. They used to call me local when I was a kid because I would fucking stab people. I don't even give a <laughs> shit. Right. He would be standing up in front of the church and then he would be bawling his eyes out like, oh, I regret my life so much. I used to deal drugs and stab people. I beat my girlfriend, had sex with 16 year olds. Uh. He would be crying, please don't live like me. And I would be in that audience going, bitch, I want to be you. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine you got to do all that horrible, awful shit. And you came out totally clean on the other side. And you get to tell me what to do. Meanwhile, I was studying in school. I was listening to my parents. I was listening to my teachers. I was making money where I can, working odd jobs, just trying to live my life, trying to get a little bit laid here and there, you know, trying to get some girl to pay attention to me. None of that shit happened, you know, barely scraping by. Now you get to fucking stand in front of me after you were the locust that crowed all summer long and you get to come back and tell me what to do. Wow. Wow. Sounds like most Hollywood actors. And exactly you yeah you're exactly right like that is the height of privilege like that is really where you want to be <laughs> you preach to the sheep and sing with the choir yeah i'm just saying like that's 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 the uh that's the Who privilege that? that cherry on top uh that's uh that's in the chat andre is saying that in the chat I like that, Andre. I can give you some respect. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it. Uh, I now, I in in all seriousness, I do believe. Person, I do personally believe that you know you want to live a virtuous life. I think, and you want to. Uh, for me, I I, I want to live a um, I want to live a life that that I can you know set a good example for my kids and. Uh, you know, mean what I say, walk my talk, you know what I mean? Have integrity, all that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong. I totally want to do that. When I'm being serious, yes, that's, it's, I think, um, I think you, you ultimately live a more fulfilling life that way, but holy shit, just to be Hunter Biden for, you know, for some of this, God, imagine that, that guy, that guy is at the, he's at the, he's at a bar right now with just doing lines of cocaine with some crazy girl on his arm that just wants to fuck him because he's Hunter Biden talking shit <laughs> about how upset everybody is. God, that guy is like, he's living it, man. That yeah, guy, yeah. That guy is living it. Him. You know, he's, he's, he's snorting up my, he's, he's got all of our taxpayer money. It's just going straight up into his nose. It's a stimulus. The stimulus going right, right into his nose and uh, just laughing his ass off like what a bunch of suckers, right? All those people that have to work nine to five jobs, all those people that are, you know, uh, you know, fighting on the front lines, trying to not get infected with coronavirus and trying to keep their families fed. What a bunch of suckers because I'm here in a bar snorting cocaine and I could be, I could walk up to people in broad daylight and say, hi, my name is Hunter Biden and uh, I'm going to fuck your sister and, and uh, I don't like Donald Trump, uh, so you guys won't say shit about it. And he's right, right? He could go right up to CNN and pull his dick out and go, hey, I know you'll turn the camera off for this. <laughs> because you will protect me no matter what, and they they, they and yeah, for sure they'll be like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. People will come out and go, No, man, I remember Hunter Biden just went up to that camera crew and pulled his dick out. 
started swinging it around and said, I'm Hunter Biden and had a, you know, and he had ID out to prove it was him. And then CNN would go on the news and go, oh, right wing activists are trying to frame Hunter Biden. (laughs) 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 Come out. (laughs) Holy shit, man. That's, that's, that's a level of existence that you can only dream about. I remember it was like a meme with some dude. It was like a, a, a reporter held up the little mic to him. And he's like, oh, do you like bacon? He's like, yeah, I absolutely love bacon. And the next day he appeared on CNN. This guy is pro killing all animals and he might be a serial killer. Might be a serial killer. <laughs> like, what the hell? He had a tiki torch in his backyard. Pretty sure he's a white supremacist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just for saying he loves bacon. Like, what? Telling you, if you were, oh man, imagine the shit that like. So can I be? Can can Hunter Biden just hire me to just tell him like crazy shit that he can get away with, and then he'll just do it. And we'll like film, you know, the promises, we'll film a documentary, like we'll film it, right? And then we'll we'll hide the footage for like 10 years. So the statue, you know, once the statute of limitations is passed and all this, then we'll put that movie out. (laughs) And that movie will be the craziest shit. People will be like, man, Tiger King ain't shit. Did you see that Hunter Biden movie? Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, guy is the that is Gosh, the most gangster shit, man. Imagine having that level of protection, and and at the same time having no political responsibility whatsoever, right? Even like most, um, even even by by most most political codes, right? If you're the daughter. If you're the son or if you're the child of a sitting president or a vice president, they normally tell you like, just, okay, just don't embarrass me on TV, right? Just don't, uh, you know, well, Bush's daughter is doing stupid shit. Like, just don't, don't, just don't embarrass us on TV. Whatever you do, don't embarrass us on TV. But Hunter Biden didn't embarrass his dad on TV. Hunter Biden full blown jumped into corruption both feet i and just just went directly into it and completely consequence free 1000% consequence free you cannot no nobody's going around going oh man i can't wait to boycott something hunter biden worked on or i can't wait till the press nails him to the wall why he's politically worth nothing he has no he has no value whatsoever. He's more valuable just as a, as just as a, uh, you know, uh, as a political football for people to throw back and forth. But the more shit he gets into, the more controversy he's involved in. Um, it's almost like the more valuable he becomes to both sides, because if you, um, if, if he gets into more. Let's say Hunter Biden uh, gets into more controversy, right? Then all the right wing outlets go, see, see, there he goes. There's, you know, there's Hunter Biden. He's there. He's doing it again. And then the other uh, outlets go, oh, no, see, see all the right wing people. They're crazy. They're a bunch of racists. Don't want to trust them. Uh, we're going to protect this guy again. Like he, he, him getting into trouble is actually better for the political uh, and, and media system than him just shutting up and being quiet. So it's actually better for him to, uh, uh, to get into worse and worse trouble, I think. Catalyst, right? A yeah, I think it's better. I think this guy has like a great career in just being a permanent fuck up for the world uh, because he just provides the best political theater. You know, especially if he control uh, a, a political target like a Trump or, a, you know, you name it. If he had a, a shit, what's the guy's name from Texas? Uh, if you have like one of the right wing guys go after him and then you have uh, 
then you have the, 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 the left wing protecting him. It just, that's actually his value, I guess. He's more valuable doing awful shit than he is just shutting up and being quiet. Let's see. <laughs> Grab him by the coochie, stayed silent for years until Trump wasn't liked. <laughs> Well, I, I specifically am enjoying this later, this latest chapter, this uh, this Alyssa Milano stuff, uh, you know, where where they were all freaked out by uh, by the Brett Kavanaugh shit and you know the the grab them by the pussy thing, like oh my god, I can't believe it, oh I can't believe he would say that he's a president, he's a president, I can't believe he would say that. Then then and then you know two weeks ago, and don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it also kind of smells of a of a political hit the same way. Somebody comes out and says, "No, Biden literally grabbed me by the pussy." <laughs> <laughs> Some and and the same Alyssa Milano is, is like, "No, yeah, I like this Biden guy. Uh, no, I don't trust her." Believe hashtag believe all women, just completely out the door. And and the icing on the cake is that. Um, and let's all, everyone write this down, okay? Everyone, because this is important life, this is an important life thing. Um, if you, apparently, if you sexually assault or harass somebody, but you're running for political office, then hashtag Time's Up, that the Time's Up organization will not defend you. That's fucking crazy. So, you know this this lady you know she she puts forth a criminal complaint against biden she she tells her story nobody's willing to listen no, you know the media falls dead silent on the whole thing right after you know all the theatrics around uh kavanaugh and uh and obviously with the trump and grabbed by the pussy and all that stuff after all of that they fall dead silent when joe biden is the next new target right uh and apparently you can you can if you if you were caught doing anything like that, you could just say, oh, I'm running for political office and hashtag times up and and the feminist organization, they will not formally defend you. They will not protect you. They're like, wow, what a crazy loophole, because that is the line that they fed to this lady. Who was like, hey, you know, I I I was sexually assaulted. Um, aren't we aren't we believing all women? Aren't we, uh, you know, aren't we, you know, hashtag Me Too sisters? And they just immediately went to, oh no, he's running for political office. We can't, we can't, we can't be involved in this case. <laughs> wow, what a loophole! What you know, a loophole! With Imagine all the accusations. I think Biden would, even if I'm I'm not like pro left or right. Come on, you have seen how many times Biden has grabbed someone by the buttocks, caressed their like little kids, teens, boobs, and all that nasty stuff, I, just sniffing people. God. Yes, those videos are super creepy. I I kind of look at this as it's kind of a, I it's a both or neither situation, right? If you were completely up in arms about the Brett Kavanaugh thing and the Trump thing and you are not and you don't feel the same about this accusation well you're a fucking hypocrite because that's why I, I mean I, I'll say I'm on the side of well you know it might be true unfortunately it was a long time ago and I, so and I feel that way about all the cases for me it's a both or neither Right. If you're offended by Kavanaugh, if you're offended by Trump, you absolutely should probably be you should absolutely be offended by the Biden accusation. But if you're if you're picking one side over the other, I, like that's just being hypocritical and you're being tribalistic at that point. It's it's uh, it's both or neither. Right. Either either none of it's acceptable or all of it's political hacking. That's kind of how I go. I just care about what are the proofs. Yeah. Well, the facts, and I need some proof. And and you know, in 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 all of these cases, you can't really prove any of these. 
Um, though hers ha- at least has, you know, names and dates and times, <laughs> where the Kavanaugh one did not have any of that. Uh, it was all, you know, all of the all of the fact, all of the facts around that were very um, were very hazy. But you know, they all ended up being media darlings and 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 so forth. And meanwhile, this lady who ends up on the wrong side of it, uh, you know, gets the gets the radio silence. Uh, it's pretty messed up. Let's see. You'd have a picture of Biden doing the hat and the media would say he was helping her with her zipper. It's true. It is true. You could have, I mean, but you know what? You know who could do it in broad daylight? My man, Hunter Biden. (laughs) (laughs) He could do it in broad daylight with, uh, you know, with witnesses present, with, uh, be like, ah, but nah, as long was... as long as the only witnesses present were were Republican hash or slash right wing slash non uh, you know left wing people, he could do it. He could do that in broad daylight. Like man, Hunter Biden, if you're watching this, you need to hire me, okay? Because <laughs> you have a gift, sir. You have a gift, and you and I can make some beautiful art out of it. <laughs> um, let's see. If you went to the bars when you were in college, you were going to try to get some ass from a drunk chick because you were drunk too. Yeah, I mean, and that's 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 a hundred percent true, uh, especially in the like the college days or whatever. But I don't know. I, I I don't even care to to jump on one side or the other side. I just want consistency, and I want to know what the rules are. That's my thing, right? Because every time, because I'm I'm an older guy, and none of these none of these rules make sense to me. Like none of the, uh, oh, you can't call anyone that anymore, and you can't, you know, you can't, you can't assume someone's gender. You can't do all. And like I I'm old, and I'm not gonna catch up with that. I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna be considered, uh, you know, uncivilized and prehistoric and all that kind of shit. I just want consistency. I just want to, I just want to, because once I know the rules, then I can find people that are gifted, like Hunter Biden, and we can do cool shit. Let's see, can you name one of the girls calved in? Uh, well, the only one I remember is the the Christine Blasey Ford, right? She was like the media darling. She was like the main um uh accuser and you know and she had creeper creepy porn lawyer you remember uh uh what's that guy's name Ma- michael avenatti you guys remember that guy that yeah. weird like that weird guy that's that like, in jail the guy the minute he opened his mouth i was like this guy is a full-blown f- fucking grifter right <laughs> and he was on every major media outlet for like three months straight. They said he was on CNN like 37 times or some shit in a row just because he was willing to say orange man bad. He was going to run for president. How do people, I, 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 kinda, I have to question the fucking normies. I do. Like, how do you forget this stuff? How do you forget? Like, people have to have crazy low memory retention. If they cannot see the very simple fact pattern of uh, mainstream media being wrong about this, wrong about Avenatti, wrong about Covington, wrong about Russia, wrong ab- – like how – Epstein, what, Weinstein. Yeah, at what point – at what point – like how stupid do you have to be for somebody to – like I, I don't think I'm particularly smart or even really educated on this stuff, but – I know a pattern when I see one, and it's like ma- every major news story to come out for the past, you know, three and a half, four years has proven to be debunked or false, or we were given an exaggerated or incorrect narrative. And if you still trust those same sources after all this, 
what the fuck is the matter with you? That's all, <laughs> that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. How many, has anyone like put up a, a bulletin board with the year, you know, start at the year 2016, just put the year 2016 and go, okay, what were the major news stories from that year? And you put the major news story up and then you put in the middle column, you put here was the narrative that was presented about that. And then in the third column you put, but here's actually how it played out. And if you saw the pattern of, well, they were wrong about this, they lied about this, they were wrong about this, they lied about this, they missed this, they didn't even talk about this story, which turned out to be totally true. How many of those do you have to, to have to show somebody, to show your average normie CNN watcher that, hey, these people are fucking doing you wrong? Do you, like, how many do you have to see? How do you forget that shit? I don't understand. How do you forget? Like Michael Avenatti been on the news for like three months straight, man. Remember that dude? He, he didn't even, he sued, he represented Stormy Daniels. And that bitch still working in like the shitty strip clubs, just trying to make ends meet. He, she sued Trump, didn't get any of that money. Um, like he grifted her. For all that money, like fuck, that's terrible, dude. And we all know Trump fucked her. Like we all know, yeah, we all know that's true and whatever. Um, yep. But he, but he was like, oh, I'm pro women. I'm gonna do this, and you know, these people need these these women need her to be heard. They need to be protected. And he ended up just walking away with her money, and we gave him a fucking pass. <laughs> again what are people that just it's the attention spans right they're just not nobody's paying attention long enough to just go wait that was that was false that was a lie this was a lie you know that wasn't true three years of russia have we not learned anything then we got ukraine um has anyone just stopped and said well, look at the goddamn fact pattern man none of this is ever true why do we keep trusting the same sources when everything they've been you know everything all of their quote-unquote major stories all turned out to be lies or misrepresentations it's just shocking to me and i i, I don't know at some i i i will admit to you guys i just kind of hit a boiling point and i was like god you really you really have to be dense not to see this at this point. You really, you know, I, what oh, was that the cat? Hey. Um, you know, I, I, I've been, I, I get a lot of flack for telling people like, uh, cause I sound like the crazy old man, right? Don't trust the media, never trust the media, right? It, don't, don't trust the, I, I'm all in favor of, yeah, trust your local news. They, they're the only ones with anything like important for you to hear because it's, that does affect your day-to-day -day life. But all these like corporate news networks, these people are fucking grifters and they're criminals. And they're, um, and yeah, and a lot of them just fucking collecting that China money. Um, but whatever. That's my rant. <laughs> Let's see. Non-disclosure agreement can't get money after that. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's. I I I don't want to pick my only side. The only side I really take is that not to trust. Uh, not to trust mainstream media news sources. Because they're going to tell you half truths. So some of what they're saying, you actually do need to hear. So I actually still, um, I still actually watch and listen to those things, but I, but I always listen. Nowadays, I'm just trained to listen to, to go, okay, well, where's the lie in all this? Where's the lie? Where's the angle, right? Why do they want me to hate this person so bad? Why do they, why do they want me to see the, this news story as so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? uh so one-sided 
right? Because the news is no matter, you know, if you're watching Fox News or MSNBC or whatever, all those news stories and all of it's all, all the same. Yeah, it's all presented through a specific filter and it's all one sided. And so, you know, if you're a person that's genuinely interested in, in learning the news, you know, I used to listen to three or four sources, but nowadays you can't even do that. You need like, I think you need like seven or eight sources. And none, and if you have seven or eight sources and you never, almost never get a unanimous angle from all of them, then that probably means you're doing something right. Because, you know, there's, there's a political angle to everything. And, and these, these businesses, like you say, um, Andre are all, they're, they're, they're all trying to cater to their audience. They're trying to tell their audience what their audience wants to hear. Uh, and they do so by mixing uh, a certain amount of truth with, uh, with a, a fair, a healthy dose of, of bias. And once you get that, then I think a lot of these news stories will start to make sense. But it, it was just shocking to me that there are people that still, you know, at the end of the day, after all of these stories came back, came out and all these hoaxes were proven out, are still like, I still trust that new source more than I trust you. That's fucking crazy to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the part that I like, okay, I do take that personally, right? People that go, oh yeah, no, no, because I trust... I trust, uh, uh, you know, MSNBC. You want to know why? Because they have 50 people working for them. They have a camera crew. They have uh, directors, writers. They have people behind the camera. They're a big corporate uh, entity. So, of course, they would do the most professional job uh, telling me the news. And I, I can get behind that logic to a degree, you know? If I, for example, if I were buying a car, right, I would be more likely to trust a major automotive brand, uh, you know, like Toyota or BMW or whatever. I would be more likely to trust a major automotive brand than like a smaller independent outfit because you'd be like, well, they're a major automotive brand. They, you know, they, I'm sure they safety test their equipment. I'm sure they have hundreds of people, possibly thousands of people and engineers and so forth working on the car. And therefore it's a better quality product than this one car that was made by seven people in Indiana. I get that. I get that. Right. But with the news, I think you can you can start with that perspective, and I don't think it's a poor perspective. You could start with that perspective. Okay, I trust corporate media because they have directors, they have researchers, they have people fact-checking. You make all of these assumptions because it's a corporate source. You make the same sort of assumptions you would when you were buying that car. But after some time, <coughs> right? If, if you had been driving Toyotas for 20 years and every Toyota you had randomly caught fire after, after you, you, know, you were told by Toyota, oh, we have finally fixed the problem. It's don't worry, our Toyotas are better than ever. And every time you bought a Toyota and started driving it around, it would catch fire. If you did that for you know, 20 years and all you ever, your only experience with Toyota was, and I, and don't, and actually I'm going to say this, I actually love Toyota. So I'm not like all of my Toyota experiences with Toyota have been fantastic. That's why, uh, that's why like our whole family, we we're pretty, we're pretty loyal to them because they've, they've shown us a pattern of making good, reliable cars. Right. But I'm saying the opposite. If it was the opposite, and we only had bad experiences with Toyota or bad experiences with Nissan or whatever, I would, I would go, hey, you know what? Time to stop buying this brand. Uh, you know, what else have you got? 
Let me try. Let's let's. Uh, you know, let's try out a let's try out a, a Volvo or let's try out a Volkswagen or something, right? So why can't you see that pattern in corporate news? It's the same thing. You're getting a you sh by now you should see that you're getting a shitty product. You have you know you have mountains and mountains of evidence to show that you do not have a good, reliable news product. That all of the stories that they've been sending you, or that they've that they've hoisted up to you for the past <clears throat> three, four, five years, have all been debunked or you know have been proven to be false. Why would you still continue to trust that news source? And I, I think I think a lot of people are not I think a lot of people are not trusting those news sources so much anymore. At least that's what what polling shows, right? Is it that there's a lot more distrust for media outlets these days. And I think that's a good thing. I think it, it needs to go even further and and you know I don't like it when people lose their jobs, but I do like it when these companies face some of that reckoning. Let's see. Remember the Pinto car? It was cheaper to pay off the dead than recall the car. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, yep. that was uh, something from uh, that they bring up in Fight Club, which is a great movie and a great book, and I really enjoy those. Um, last time you saw. Toyota commercial on TV. Um, we still, I still see uh, Toyota commercials on TV. They, you know, probably like now the only TV um, that the only things uh, that are on our TV in the house it, when I'm not watching anime in my room because I'm a weeb. Uh, <laughs> the only TV on in our house is like usually Comedy Central watching The Office. That's what my wife watches. She watches reruns of The Office. Or my kids will watch uh, uh, Nick Jr. or something like that, right? But but yeah, you'll see some Toyota commercials. But they almost never have to talk about their cars. Toyota is never, almost never has to. They they have such a strong brand that it's like, oh well, the new Highlanders came out. That's all they have to say. They don't even have to tell you what it does. You're like, oh cool, the new Highlanders came out. Right. You already kind of know like, oh, yeah, that's a good quality car. Uh, I have a Highlander. Love that car. Um, you know, it's great for transporting all my miniatures and 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 Nelson's miniatures. Put those in the back. <laughs> then we have to paint them. <laughs> but yeah, but, you know, that's that's Toyota brand, though. They don't they don't have to. It's like Coke. Coke makes commercials because they want to. They absolutely don't have to. Uh, Nike, same thing. They don't have to make commercials. They just do it for fun. Um, you know, it's it's crazy good to have that level of. That's the kind of brand recognition you want to get to, where you're you're so reputable. You just put out, you know, you put out your your uh, product and people love it. Wow, getting doing pretty well here. You know they watch in South Park. <laughs> Man, I love this guy. I don't know what you guys think, but Batman in Japan is awesome. And some karate kick there. He's uh he's pretty skinny as far as Batman go, but pretty great. But it'll be nice once these are done. Um, that's all three of the, the major expansion boxes done for season two. Then I have all those like singles and I'll just start chipping away at those when I can. There's like no rush at all because, um, you know, it's not like we're going to get to play this game anytime soon, but it's, I just like mm -hmm. I just like completing the projects, you know, I think they're, I think they're cool. 
So we're gonna clean up the yellow. Batman of Japan. This is cool. It kind of reminds me of uh, Common Rider. If you guys remember, that was an old. They have a term for it. Uh, tokusatsu, right? Oh, uh, model range. This is uh, from the Monolith uh, Batman Gotham City Chronicles set. Uh, so this is the season two Kickstarter. And then, so this set, Andre, is Batman Inc. Uh, it's basically all the uh, the international uh, Batman affiliates. So you got Batman of Japan, um, Batman of Moscow. Then you have Chief Man Bat, or whatever his name is. You got Dark Ranger from Australia. You have Knight from the UK. Be cool now that we can like we can make a whole team of just different Batman now. <laughs> that is pretty unique though. Yeah. I just, I don't know what half of this stuff is, but uh Whenever I break it out and show it to people, the real Batman fans go nuts over it. They're like, oh my god, they made they made that Batman. That's so cool. Aw, oh, man. I need a good yellow. Ooh, that's a bright yellow. Who did I learn to paint from? Jeez. That's a good question. Um... You know, I started painting in the in the dark ages when internet was a brand new thing and nobody taught you anything on how to paint. So I'm sure you've heard this story from many painters from that age where it was like we had to learn everything by going to the store and buying like testers paint and realizing that was shit paint. <laughs> <laughs> like ruining batch after batch of models and figuring out uh, slowly how to do everything. Um, these days, I, if, I, I would tell people if you really wanted to learn basic painting and who's really, who can really teach you, um, good painting techniques, I would go with, uh, the painting clinic, probably my go-to. Oh, thanks for the compliment. Um, you know, painting clinic is a local guy over here and he's just, he's guy is crazy talented and he's awesome. Um, also Sarastro has really good painting guides. Miniac is one of my favorite channels to watch. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of good painters on the internet. I'm not really, I don't even consider myself, uh, to be a really good painter. I'm just a productive one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can, uh, I can paint a lot. That's, that's really my my claim to fame. Well, I can, I can remain very power. productive. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to give you like award winning models, but they're going to look good. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be pretty happy as somebody who games with the models. I think if you were a collector, um, you'd probably, you probably want to go with uh, one of the higher end painters and, you know, pay a little bit more money. But if you're somebody that's like, I'm going to buy a lot of models and I'm gonna, and my expectation is, you know, I want to play those models, then, uh, then I'm, I, I'm probably your guy to paint your stuff for you because we'll make sure that we get, you know, a bunch of your models on the table so you can enjoy, enjoy your big old Kickstarter game. Yeah, Dr. Faust. Yeah, he's, he's great. I, I don't know if you follow his uh, Facebook page, but he also ha he also reviews um, like B horror movies, and his reviews his movie reviews are pretty funny. 
he's a cra- he's just a crazy good painter. Like I've had, um, I've had a, a, a few instances where I actually got to sit down and paint with him. And he's been, he was actually on this, uh, on this feed, geez, probably, probably six or seven years ago, he would hop on this feed. Uh, and he was always really just kind of, uh, he always kind of came off as kind of grumpy, but he's super cool. It's actually part of his charm is he's kind of, he just seems like a grumpy dude all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, I played Malifaux with that guy and a couple other games. He always just thought I was, I think I was a little too upbeat for him, a little too animated. <laughs> but yeah, Dr. Faust is awesome. You should, you really want to get into painting and learning how to paint well. I think that's your guy. But there's so many good uh, YouTube painters out there. Um, if you watch uh, those Angel Geraldes videos, those are amazing. I don't think they're explained very well, you know, because they they're they're you know he he'll have them dubbed in English and whatnot. But still, just watching the guy work is pretty nuts. That reminds me, we need to do uh, um, for Comic Quest. I promised them I would do, I would host a paint day, a virtual paint day, on Zoom, and just put it on the, you know, on their Facebook or whatever. So because we can't schedule paint day in house, I was just going to offer, you know, I'll give up uh, a few hours on a Saturday or whatever. You know, open up a Zoom and, and have people paint together. So if that happens, Nelson, I'll let you know, because that'd be cool. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Cool to come check out. Okay. Who else needs work? Looks like we're doing pretty well. This guy here needs a lot of work. I like Angel, but he has too many steps. Uh, you know... I went through a phase where I was trying to follow Geraldo's method. So I even went out and I bought the super expensive, um, I bought the super expensive CR plus, which is just a gorgeous uh, airbrush. And I still love it. Like I still break it out and use it, but I was following his method where you, you go through and you airbrush, you know, the crazy nice effects and all that kind of stuff on the mini. Um, but it, it, you're right. It took really long and you had to, it to be really sharp with that stuff, but it looked so cool. Like I did that on a couple of my Aristea minis and it looks great. I'm looking at, looking at this dude right now, Knight. Let's see if I get this right. So here's the, here's the studio art. So, I don't know what this is, if that's steel or if, it's hard to tell. Like, should I have made that NMM um, like a bluish steel color or is it like a periwinkle? Uh, I don't know. I think it is like a steel color. All right, here's what we're gonna, we're just gonna try. We're gonna do, I'm gonna do something. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but worth a shot. So I'm gonna give it more of a blue tinge and then I'm gonna wash the whole thing with, uh, with armor wash and we'll see how it goes. I'm glad these are my minis and that I'm not, I mean, I do experiment on other on commissions <laughs> as Nelson knows. <laughs> I do yeah. that from time to time. I mean, 99.99% of them turn out perfect. So it usually, it, it usually works or I figure out some way to fix it if I don't like it. But yeah. uh, 
No, I'll, I'll, I'll admit to you, like, there have been some commissions I've done, not just for you, but for other people, where it's like, man, it did not turn out the way I liked. So I, you know, I'll take a little bit of money off of the top and go, okay, <laughs> just pay me this much because I felt, I felt a little bad about how it panned out. Hey, what's up, Alaric Hansen? I'm a real night owl. It's not that late. Usually, I'm usually going about this time and trying to wrap up, but we're having fun. We're talking all kinds of trash, just painting. Oh, shoot, I forgot to paint that, but how you doing? <laughs> No winkle on the guy, please. <laughs> what? I'm not sure what that means. Whatever winkling is, I'm going to not do that. So I'm just taking a really thin amount of... Uh, what's the name of this color? Talisar Blue. And you can see I'm just I'm adding it as a shade to this to give it almost more of like a, it's gonna have more of a steel effect when I hit it with the, with the armor wash. But you can see I'm like fading out that blue color. This works really nice on, uh, you know, if you're trying to do like a steel tone, but in a more cartoony manner, it's kind of a cool way to do it. I'm gonna do a little there. All right, so we're just making it, making this look like a shade coat. And then I think I have to do the cloak. Uh, I'm gonna have to do the cloak a kind of a different color than the art. No periwinkle. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not doing, it looked, to me, it looked a little bit like periwinkle on the um, on the artwork, but no, I don't worry. I'm not doing that. I cannot tell. Well, let me show you guys the artwork again. And you guys tell me what you think here <clears throat> while this is drying. So so what color do you think that cloak is? Is it just white? What yeah, it looks like it. I think it's just white. white. Yeah. So I should probably just I should probably just paint the cloak like I'm painting a white cloak. Okay. Let's do that. It's easier than the plan I had. This uh Sculpt is pretty awesome, I think. This is uh, Knight and Squire were English crime fighters similar to Batman and Robin, but unlike the dynamic duo, these two were inspired by the heraldry of the medieval era. <laughs> That's cool. It's UK Batman. Where do I get the Squire mini? Have you heard of these guys, Nelson? Or anybody in the chat? You heard of Knight mm -hmm. and Squire? Mm -hmm. Seem cool. Again, I like the design. I look like it's just pretty much essentially like Batman with different kinds of armor. Yeah. But he looks, I don't know, he looks more. Uh, He definitely looks more noble than Batman does. Batman's got a, a little yeah. horror. He's got a little bit of a terrifying element to him. And obviously that's by design. And this guy here has got... Right? This would be a, a pretty cool uh, cosplay to do. To be knight. But then people, you'd walk around, people would think you're just a shitty Batman cosplay. 
<laughs> it'd be like off. he's like dude why are you bad at cosplaying batman <laughs> that's true huh you walk I around Wonder, WonderCon. only the most obscure batman fans would think you're the coolest person ever they'd be like dude that guy cosplayed as night and then you came in right and your friend would be dressed up as uh as a uh, you know, chief man bat, and they wouldn't let him in. <laughs> yeah. He would get kicked out of WonderCon. Chief man bat and El Gaucho. They'd be like, "No, you guys can't come in. Your your outfits are too offensive." <laughs> <laughs> like no. I wanted to cosplay as uh, as uh, accomplished. Uh, accomplished superior physician or whatever. Did you do you ever see that hero? No. He's like the he was the the most accomplished Chinese doctor. What? That guy's awesome. A, a accomplished perfect physician, I think, is his name. If you guys want to Google that, he is awesome. Kmart Batman. K- Kmart. Yeah, you would get clowned <laughs> so hard if you were walking around, uh, you know, WonderCon or Comic Con as this guy. There would be like 10 people that think you are the coolest person ever. Like, oh man, that guy cosplayed Night. Everybody else is like, dude, why don't you buy yourself an actual Batman costume? <laughs> you suck. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and you try to do a British accent. You'd be like, pardon me, but I'm not Batman. And they would say, whatever. You suck at Batman and Christian Bale didn't use his British accent when he was Batman. Idiot. I think this guy's cool, though. Okay. Uh, Let us do... So now I'm going to do the armor wash step. So this is going to add additional shade to the steel. Right. Try not to make it look too dirty, but I do want to have a dark enough shade in here. So I'll come back and fix it with uh, with a little white. But you can see where this is going. like. Those are gonna look more like uh, like steel. And then we'll we'll get those to highlight back up. Am I missing anything? Okay. Get back to the cloak. We'll brighten up the cloak a little bit. Bale was great at bat at Batman and Bruce Wayne. Who's your favorite uh, uh, Batman, Nelson? Batman or Bruce Wayne? There's two different. Characters. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you pick one for each. Um, including Tim Burton, right? Like the old school. Yeah, sure. Even Adam West, oh. if you want to, you know, go back as far as you like. Yeah, I mean, Adam West kind of started all right, but I always yeah. felt like those costumes are super silly. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I somehow like, um, gosh, not Val Kimmer, but what was the other guy? Looney or uh, no. oh, Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton, there you go. Michael I Keaton somehow... was a pretty damn good Batman, I agree. Yeah, I like that Batman for some reason. Like, I mean, of course, I went through that phase of like, oh, Christian Bale was the best, and you know, but yeah, I like Michael Keaton a lot more for some reason. Now I'm a little bit older now, but 
Mm-hmm. Um, but in regards to Bruce Wayne, though, I'm sure I would get a lot of flack for this, but I personally think whatever screen time Batflack had, he played this older version of Bruce Wayne where it actually fits him a lot better as he got older and tired of crime fighting, you know? You're like, not the only person time. that thinks that. There's a, uh, there's a lot of people. A lot of, like, a lot of good, you know, I consider to be credible um, uh, movie critics that, that say they like, they like how Affleck did uh, old Bruce Wayne. They liked yeah, him as because... kind of a grumpy, disgruntled, older guy. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's basically, it's, it's basically like uh, Frank Miller Batman, right? Yeah. He, yeah. You know? So that's that's pretty cool. I don't um, know. I mean, um, I'll stop that his show got axed though. All well, his movies got axed. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm gonna pick the I'm gonna pick the dark horse, and uh, I'm gonna go with my honestly my favorite Batman, not Bruce Wayne, but my favorite Batman has is it has to be Will Arnett as Lego Batman. <laughs> Oh, I heard it's pretty good. Yeah. I just think that's great. I, I, I recognize that Bat, Lego Batman is a very different character, but I think it was such a perfect uh, cast for Will Arnett and, and Will, Arnett, Will Arnett's voice. Uh, now, if you, made me, if you made me pick a more uh, canonical Batman, um, man, that's a tough one. I like Christian Bale as... Batman, like I like him as Batman way more than Bruce Wayne, but I also agree with with you, Nelson, that I also really like Keaton as Batman. And I I went into that thinking I would hate Keaton as Batman, right? Because by that time I had seen I'd seen a lot of uh, Michael Keaton movies, uh, Mr. Mom, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mom, Gung Ho. Uh, you know, I'd seen a lot of 80s Michael Keaton movies. Okay, we'll just put it that way. And I'd be like, that dude is going to play Batman? That's terrible. I'm like, what a terrible cast. Uh, you know, I was like, I love uh, Jack Nicholson. The idea of Jack Nicholson being Joker. I'm like, okay, that's fantastic. Love Jack Nicholson. He better carry the movie. And he, for the most part, he did for me. But I also really liked Keaton. And like a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, to the point where you know when the second movie came out I was like yeah Keaton is Batman I can I can get behind this and uh, uh, you know also really like the Danny DeVito Joker um, and then you know I like Christopher Walken in everything so uh, because Ben didn't have to carry the whole movie yeah fair I don't know I I, I did not watch much Batfleck period I watched some of Batman v Superman, and I've watched, uh, I've watched some Justice League. Like I haven't actually sat through many of the Snyder movies, um, but I, I, so I don't really have a firm opinion on, on Batfleck either way. Uh, so I guess, yeah, I guess my favorite. I don't know if I had to choose between Christian Bale Batman and, uh, and Keaton Batman. Oh, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, that's a tough one. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick um, Keaton, but mainly because I liked. I liked his his villains better. In other words, I liked Jack Nicholson better. I liked um, Danny DeVito better. I liked that. I, I didn't think Christian Bale. You know, Bane was pretty cool, but I didn't feel like, I don't know. I didn't feel like the, 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 you know, given the tone of the Dark Knight Rises movies, I just wasn't all that impressed with, with his set of bad guys. Whereas the, the Keaton, you know, the, the, um, uh, I forget, you know, the, what's the name of the stupid director? Tim Burton. Tim Burton. The Tim Burton Batman series was his. The Batman movies were so weird, yeah. and so they were just 
they were just so characteristically strange that it 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 made everything a lot more memorable for me. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I don't know when 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 uh, Michael Keaton does the you want to get nuts that let's get nuts. I thought that shit was hilarious, and I laughed <laughs> in the movie theater when he did that. Um, I just couldn't take him. I, I I couldn't take him that seriously, especially when the first movie came out. But I did like him. Like I still ended up liking him as Batman. All right, who's worst? Who is the worst Batman? Oh come on! <laughs> who's the worst one? I don't know. I I keep wanting to say Clooney, but the thing is, I don't think he's that bad either. It's just I hate the fact that they put nipples on on bat on bat suits. It's like come yeah. on, is that really necessary? I don't think he gets a hundred percent blame for that. I think it's Schumacher just being bad. <laughs> in general not being able to put together uh like an entertaining batman movie i think he shoulders at least part of that blame like, I, I still remember a certain scene where george clooney was actually pretty decent like he was taking care of alfred when alfred got sick, uh, sick right because um because of mr freeze arnold here yeah. Uh, his whole city and you know, knowing knowing Alfred, his elderly person, that's super sick. I just remember that really hard, hard touching, um, like heartfelt moment about Bruce finally able to take care of, you know, the good old Butler. And that's that cool. But, like on that, I just don't think he's a good Batman, to be honest. Yeah, I I didn't. I just didn't think that movie, the that movie was good in too many areas. Right, wasn't a good Batman. Villains were not that impressive as not as impressive as they could have been at least on paper. Um, and then what's his name as Robin and uh, and what's her name Alicia Silverstone as. Uh, oh, his Batgirl, it was like, yeah, I don't know. Just never, That's never really got into that. Um, it, the thing is, uh, well, I'm actually pretty surprised. Uh, what about when you say Christian Bale's villains? But your uh, like, your audio is coming in really weird. I don't know if you're on speakerphone or something, but it's coming in. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a. Uh, it sounds like you're in a tunnel or something. Yeah. Can you hear me right now? I can hear you, but it's very your voice is it's it's like very digitized. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let me leave and I'll be right back. Sure. Okay. So we're getting some quality time on night here. I think he's coming along. He definitely has more character than he did when we first started painting him, but let's get a little more. White always the fun stuff to paint, right? Just layer after layer of white until you get it. White is you, you paint it until you give up, essentially. All right. Let's let... Uh, they were created by Weinstein. They were cast by Weinstein. <laughs> they were cast by Weinstein. Maybe China was listening. There you go. China was trying to mute you. They were trying to convince the audience that you're a Russian bot. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was saying, like, I was surprised that when you said, um, like, well, pretty much in the Nolan trilogy, the villains weren't as memorable but what about what about um Heath Ledger's Joker well yeah Ledger Joker for sure but the thing about Joker is you remember everybody that plays Joker true that yeah they've always been good like they've always done a really good job picking people to play Joker and Nicholson may even be the weakest Joker 
of, at this of, point now of the yeah. of all the jokers that we've seen that's crazy to me because nicholson was awesome as joker yeah can you hear me now <laughs> yeah um yeah so i will yeah i will totally give you that i don't know it just for for whatever reason i think christian bale did a great job as batman but I guess I'm more impressed with Keaton mainly because he I was way more skeptical. You know what I mean? So he had wow. he had more to prove with me as an audience member. Right. When they said, oh, Christian Bale, Batman, I'm like, oh, good. Good choice. Right. OK, I'm on board. I like. Right. Cool. But when they said Michael Keaton's going to be Batman, I was like, what is this crap? <laughs> Mr. Mom is going to be Batman? That's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I'm not too familiar Batman. with you. Yeah, you never watched Mr. Mom, right? Yeah. Mr. Mom was a it was it was it's a decent comedy. It was a, from early 80s and uh, you know, obviously you can tell what the story is just by the title. Right? He was, <laughs> he was an old school, you know, working dad and this is during the 80s when, you know, it was much more common to have the traditional breadwinner and the housewife, right? And suddenly they have to switch roles and, uh, you know, his adventures being a stay-at-home dad. It's, it was pretty funny. Uh, and then the other, he did a bunch of movies, but I remember uh, Gung Ho, which is <laughs> it's a movie about where he's a, he's an automaker. And, you know, from Detroit, and they ship him over to Japan to make, start making cars. And it's about, you know, all the cultural, uh, all the cultural um, uh, struggles he has, like trying to understand Japanese culture and, and teaching them how to be winners and, and, uh, you know, take pride in what they do. It was really interesting, because I'm like, man, this movie is like, it would be like teaching, you know, the first the first guy who who uh, uh, taught the Japanese how to beat American automakers. <laughs> that was a good movie for its part time. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this guy. He's cool. I think he's a cool sculpt. He's a cool sculpt for sure. Like I can't really tell what's going on in his face though. Yeah, he has like a gas mask. Okay. Thing there. Oh, uh, um, like a like bang almost. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of highlighting there, but you know the real reason why Bang was actually cast because Heath Ledger died in real life. So mm -hmm. the story was kind of rushed because they were planning on killing off Harvey Dent and um, bringing back Joker after he was arrested, right? Okay. So they were banking on him returning and with the side villain as well. But of course, all that went to went, went to crap Crapple because obviously what happened too. Yeah. Right. It's kind of sad, but yeah, that's a bummer. This is uh, this is Batman of Moscow, Andre. It's a really cool mini. You know, it's crazy what when you see what Monolith and uh, and uh, you know Mythic. Who, what's the what's the company that made um, uh, Mythic Battles, right? Mythic. Mythic Battles Pantheon, yeah, Mythic. What they can do with single sculpt PVC plastic, right, is amazing. Like these sculpts are really good, considering like their single piece, their single piece PVC plastic, and you can get a, some really good sculpts out of them. You know, I so, honestly don't understand what kind of like. Yeah. Yes like machine that they use because with our th like high-end 3d printers that we can buy as a consumer you know we're talking about like ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars 3d printer even then the quality is like 
HD quality when it prints out. It's it's you can see the filaments. So yeah, I don't know how they're doing with these. I don't know. All I know is I'm glad this Kickstarter delivered before all this crap happened. Because who knows when we would have got this out of China otherwise, right? Well, if you waited, it could have came with coronavirus too. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, Gotham City Chronicles. Have you seen them? I have not seen the Russian Superman movie. I heard awesome things about it though. Yeah, he's a pretty awesome skull. Night Model has it. Um, yeah. This came when we were uh, right after the lockdown started. And I was like, oh shit, I need to go buy stuff. So I went and I bought, um, I bought Marvel Crisis Protocol. And that shit is still in the shrink wrap <laughs> because this came in like the next day they showed up on my doorstep and I was like, Oh, okay. Now I know what I'm painting during lockdown. And, uh, uh, so far I've painted, um, league of assassins, paint league of assassins. I painted, um, suicide squad. And now I painted, um, Batman ink. So now it's just a matter of um, painting uh, all those singles that this came with. And I was showing you the singles the other night. They're pretty cool. I got to see it. Nice. Do you think this, does this cloak need to be darker or are we pretty happy with that color? I love that color. It's pretty cool, right? I think if anything, it just needs a, it probably just needs a little bit of sheen to it. I'm maybe so biased, but I just so, love anything black and red. So I'm putting, I'm going to put a little bit of armor wash on it just to, to bring the sheen up so that when it seals, it'll have, a, it won't look so flat. But I don't see a need to, um, to highlight it because I don't want to, I don't want too many of the lines screaming at me for this model. This model's kind of busy when you look at all the, you know, when you look at the texture of the cloak. So I'm just going to keep this one very simple. Nice. All right. Okay. All right. Who am I missing? So we got that. Uh, wow. I may actually be done. I think if I can, if I want to do anything, I'll come back to you. Uh, I'll come back to Dark Ranger here. And let's just do, I'm just going to do a little bit of orange on the bottom here. Just to kind of sell the sell the flames a little bit more. So a little dark ranger, and I'll just do this. This is our um, this is our Hunter Biden mini. Yeah. <laughs> On Earth Day, I put a bunch of fuel in a fucking jetpack, man. And I've made smog all over the town. Happy Earth Day, bitches. And nobody in the media said anything. My life is so fucking great. <laughs> I got away with it, yeah. I'm telling you, we should make a board game out of it. <laughs> most untouchable dude ever. <laughs> yeah. This guy is super... I actually kind of hated his sculpt. But now it's, it's kind of cool. I like him and uh, Batman of Japan. I like most of these sculpts. I could 
let's spend a little more time on on night, but pretty happy with night too. All right, all right. Uh, let me close this up, and then I'll do one last kind of flash of each mini for you guys to look at, and then we'll call it. Cool. So, so Batman Inc. Once again. So we got. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so Batman Inc. So this is night. Yeah, I kind of like the the kind of blue steel effect on him. Dark Ranger. Just looks kind of like your basic jetpack trooper to me. We got Batman of Moscow. I'll post um after I seal these guys up, I'll post uh, the completed photos on. Instagram, if you guys are following me on Instagram. Batman in Japan, very Marshall. simple, really simple uh, design there. We got Night Runner, again, just a parkour guy. Also really easy design. Um, we got Raven Red, which I don't even I don't even quite understand this guy's design, but okay. Uh, and then you got two of my favorites. El Gaucho. El Gaucho. Throwing the knives. And then finally my man. Man Chief Bat. Just awesome looking. Cool. You're going to watch my other videos? Thanks, dude. All right, guys. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining, Nelson. Have a good night, uh, sir. We'll talk to you guys later. Sure.